Let's go. How are you? Let's go. You know what time it is. Everyone's in the chat. It's a good day. All right. I am. Well, we don't really need to introduce ourselves after like three or four weeks, do we? But just in case, if you're new here and you don't know what the Pro Chess League is or anything like that, I'm International Master David Proust, joined by National Master James Canty the Third. Yes, sir. And uh, we are commenting on the Summer Series, which is a mix of, you know, the professional part of Pro Chess League and then the fan part of Pro Chess League. So we've got representatives from the different teams uh, that come in and, and play for their teams in a knockout battle. And we also have um, sort of fan clubs playing these live club matches. So you got a chance to play for your favorite team. And uh, some people have been doing that for 12 weeks now. If you haven't, this week is your last chance to do so. It's the last week of the regular season. Yep, last week of the regular season. So make sure you guys play. Look, it's going down in about eight minutes. Eight minutes to Norway Gnomes and the can't the Con Blitz stream. Uh, it's, it's about to be a battle. So you guys have some time to get in here, of course. And uh, we got some strong lineups, as I see right now, looking at the pairings so far. So it's all up to you. It's all about the fans. That's what it's always about. So good to see you guys. Yeah, and uh, both of those teams, the uh, the Khan Blizzard and the Norway Gnomes, are in quite a battle for a playoff spot. The Khan Blitzstream is one point ahead of the Norway Gnomes. Match victory is worth three points, so whoever wins this match is going to put themselves in very good position to uh, get second place in Group D and get a spot in the Summer Series Championships. Whichever team loses this match is going to be in trouble heading into that knockout. It's about to be real today, guys, okay? So you see right now the chess prize with 11. They are going off right now. Yeah. 11 points is unheard of right now. They can crush everything this week. So let's see what happens. A uh, shout out to everyone in the chat. Perpetual Stalemate says, hello, David and Canty. Good to see you guys and everyone coming today. It's all about you, it's all about the fans. So make sure you guys play. And if you are playing for the teams, make sure you can stream it or like tweet it out just to have a chance at $250 in the fan fans. Yeah. The bras have not only clinched a playoff spot, they've clinched first place in this group, but what we're looking to see from them today is can these guys set the record for the most points scored all summer? Um, I would say yes. How about you, James? Absolutely. I think they are in beast mode right now or bra mode to say uh, uh, exactly what they are. The chess bras are really going off. So I absolutely think that they they have a statement to make today. And we're going to see what Ivan does representing the uh, con the um, sorry, the, the, the chess bras today. Okay. Yeah. So James and I have each predicted the chess bras to win the knockout battles and their live club match. So another perfect six out of six week. If that comes true, they'll have scored 17 out of 18 possible points, which is just, I mean, it's its just outrageous. I mean, it's so far beyond what any other team has done. That's right. They are also winning in the fan growth. They're just winning everywhere. They're winning okay. everything. They're winning everywhere. So we need to see what they do today and what's going to happen. But yeah. again, it's all about you guys. They could get crushed today, highly unlikely. But they could definitely be crushed if you guys go in there and like actually play for the other team. So it just depends on what the stack and the lineups look like, but we're going to have a lot of great chess today. I do I do know that. We've got some really good players today, four grandmasters representing their teams. GM Ivan Saric, GM Jan Ludwig Hammer, GM Andrew Tang, GM Fabien Libyshevsky. And um, so there's going to be some really, really high quality chess to follow here, as well as the chess that you guys play yourselves, which will be, you know, uh, or maybe great today, right? <laughs> right. You know, I'm just oh, playing. Absolutely. You never know, right? You know, and also I'm, I'm looking forward to see what Hammer is going to do today. I saw yeah. Hammer actually was streaming yesterday. So mm -hmm. Hammer was like uh, getting ready for, you know, uh, tomorrow, Pro Chess League Summer Series. And I know he, he was, he didn't have the best performance last week. Yeah. So I know he's, he's ready. He's definitely ready this week. Also, Andrew Tang just did a match yesterday playing Bullet with a, a friend of mine, a mutual friend. So nice. played about 40, 50 games. He's always just like, you know, playing Bullet Chess even when he's sleeping. So. We right. know uh, it's going to be uh, some serious from him. Fabian, I, I'm, I'm very interested to see what uh, Fabian does, does and Yvonne to see what yeah. they do here. You know, so exciting. Yeah. I mean, this is the first uh, this is the first summer series play for Grandmaster Yvonne Saric. Um, like you said, Hammer and Tang, they each played two weeks ago. Um, and then Hammer again played last week. So he's played both matches for the Gnome so far. So far one week, it was just highlight reel after highlight reel, and he won the knockout and, and did everything he could. Last week, he had a tougher week. We'll see if he can bounce back. But um, it's going to be tough for him right out of the get-go because he's going to be up against Ivan Saric 
um, in that knockout. And uh, the chess bras, if anybody thought they would just coast because they'd clinched, uh, I think just seeing Ivan Saric in here says no. I mean, this guy's, you know, recently hit 2,700 in classical chess. His performance rating in the 2019 season was 2,741. He's just, he's their biggest, he's their biggest Absolutely. star. I mean, not that, you know, Hanson and Hambo and those guys aren't like, you know, the core of the chess bras, but as far as like hired, you know, high profile, hired guns who can right. go up against the top in the world, this is, this guy yeah, is elite. One job to do, you know, when he got, when he comes in, you know, exactly what's about to happen. He is here, so he does not get fined. You know exactly what's about to happen. So, Ivan Sarek uh, is, is about to uh, really, I think, show a dominating performance is what I believe, but we'll see what happens. Of course, Hammer is still going to swing the hammer, and Penguin's going to bring his friends from the glacier. And also, uh, <laughs> it's going to be serious. Everybody, I just, the only person I don't know is Fabian. I'm yeah. not sure. He does have a lot of courses out. I know a lot of his material. He plays the French a lot. So, um, he is a very, very strong player. We just have to see what he does today with these beasts. Yeah. So, um, anybody wants to play, this is it. This is like the last call. We got three minutes and 20 seconds to get into that match. Norway Gnomes, Khan Blitzstream. Uh, this is critical. I mean, pretty much after this match, if one of these teams wants to come back after losing the match, they'll have to sort of win the knockout while the other team gets last place, basically, right? So, it's going to, which is going to, you know, require some luck and some skill. So, this is where they've got their their fate in their own hands here in this this club match or their fate in all of your hands. Um, so pick your team. Pick and, your team uh, wisely and let's go. Let's go. Shout yeah. out to Martin Kessler. Says Yo Canty, how are you? Tang beat Danya. Yeah, Tang is beating everyone. Okay. Wow. Tang is definitely a uh, but of course Danya is a monster himself. So Danya is going to win some games. We already know that. But Tang versus uh, Danya. That's a bullet match. I'd like to watch. Absolutely. Absolutely. Would love to see something like that. So. I just logged onto the internet one day randomly last week, and uh, it was Danya versus Hikaru, and they had like a hundred games played. You know, it was like you know sixty versus forty, and they like played for another hour or something. It was absolutely insane. <laughs> insane, right? Thousands of people watching. Like, right? insane. That's, that's beautiful. Beautiful to see that. All right. So uh, one other thing that we will show you guys is where the bracket is looking for the playoffs. A lot of teams have sort of clinched their seedings at this point. For example, Montreal Chess Bras in Group D. We already know that they will win the group and that they will finish behind Sao Paulo Capybaras for fan club growth. So they'll be the number two team as far as fan club growth in this bracket here. And... Um, one of the sort of crazy things with this bracket is that we've got St. Louis Archbishops, Chengdu Pandas, and Montreal Chess Bras all on the same side of a bracket. These are all, you know, extremely storied pro chess league teams, right? Teams that have had a lot of success in 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 here in the past. Absolutely, and it's going to be very very fun to see here. Of course, just to see what the uh, what the bracket is going to look like and the shake up and the mix up here. First off, guys in the chat right now who are you rooting for you see this bracket here who's going to take it on and who is your choice for the winner of the summer summer league by the way game should be starting soon actually yeah no, right under a minute the games are underway yep let's look at the ratings who's more stacked it looks like Khan Khan has a very top heavy team so far, but I think it's pretty evenly matched. Uh, nice. Yeah, it looks pretty balanced. We got pretty balanced. Got yeah. a lot of people playing people only one rating point apart from them, <laughs> so that's that's intense. Is uh is Khan um I imagine that uh, I imagine that Khan is also going to be streaming the match themselves, so we'll uh we'll see that pretty soon. Um. Sorry, everybody. We're going to go through a quick little refresh here. Dun, dun, dun. I'm going to put you into a breakout room. Shit, All right. Breakout. Oh, okay. I see. So, Khan's probably streaming it on their own channel if you want to follow this stuff in French, if you want to follow the emotions of the Khan players themselves. <clears throat> but uh, let's see. Let's try and click on the first games here, huh? There we go. No See way if we knows. can get it going. And the boys. All 
All right. And we have liftoff. The first game is starting here. There we go. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Porn Grabbers obviously says for the absurd. Double David, yeah. Hello, guys. What's up, Bob? Couple of me. Sorry. Let's go, chess bras. Let's go. That's right. We just got two of me talking to myself for a second, but luckily we can hear your voice, James. So right, yeah, we're just checking out the game right here. Let, let us the stream play and, let us uh, know what you think of this of this opening while I while so, I resolve things. Right, this um this Kings Indian defense. I'm a huge fan of the Kings Indian defense. Huge fan. But um looking at this position so far, I think Black's fine. It's very uh it's very even to say the least. I mean, of course they have to still develop and create plans here. But what Black has in his center right now is just uh, equality. I would say so far. He is threatening the pawn on c4. The knight's ideally placed. And uh, this is a very nice King's Indian defense position. A lot of times in the King's Indian defense, you have a problem with uh, space, with space here for the black pieces. And space is not an issue if you look at this right now. Yeah. Not an issue. What what else can you tell us about this position? Do you like do you do you play this for either side? Do you like this? I actually don't play d4 at all. D4 is not a move. So um, out of the all out of the opening at least. So not not in my case. I just don't play d4. But um, I, if I have to, you know, I'll play a, a London system sometimes if I'm playing bullet or blitz, and that's very very rare. But for black, I, I just like Black's position so far. Norway Gnomes is actually, or he's thinking. Hammer is actually just thinking right now. But I know one thing. When Hammer goes into the think tank, when he comes out, something magical happens. So he is thinking right now. And it's uh, he's down two minutes on time, but not enough to say anything. He's also playing uh, Fabian, which I'm not sure what their record is at all. It's just kind of an interesting way uh, for both of them to meet here right now, not knowing what our, each other's styles really are, haven't played at all psychologically what's going on here how is Fabian feeling as well too I think he's pretty comfortable though in his King's Indian defensive position and now we have uh hammer taking the knight captures the knight pawn takes followed up with bishop to g5 so development also the d5 square is very weak so you should see a move something like c6 maybe oh he might be getting in trouble though c6 that was a good move hammer is such a monster bishop g5 is such an annoying move you C might have to take on D1. C6 probably has to be played at some point, but if it gets played right here, you're thinking Hammer might trade on D8 and play knight E4? And it's GG. He did it. He did it. Isn't that over? Oh, wait, no. No, no, was, no. Uh, that was you on the That's board. just me showing your idea. I was like, what? All right. He traded on D1 like he had to. Now he's going to have to play C6 as well. Yep. That was now, very smart. Very smart, Hammer. Now let's see what Hammer's got going here. I see two ideas the first idea i had was to try and get this knight to d6 um but uh the only way to get there is through e4 so then you'd have to trade a piece so then you're kind of simplifying a little bit so then i'm thinking my second idea might be better which is b4 b5 trying to increase the scope of the bishop on g2 and open up something more on the queen side yeah b4 b5 is a, is a real thing they actually do that a lot in uh in king's indian defensive positions but for black here it's like i'm honestly not confused but like what is what's black's real plan here honestly it's kind of weird uh but also white too white has i think more space but black has a, a a problem trying to figure out plans and ideas i think he just needs to just develop which bishop e6 should be the next move um, for white, I'm not sure what he should be doing, honestly, either. Maybe b3, rook c1, or rook c1 first and then b4, b5, like you said, is an obvious plan. So I think it's still double-edged. There's a lot of chess left to see here. He goes with the b3 plan, more solid. Very slow, very slow. So he doesn't, he's not going for anything super fast. Maybe if he played b4, he was worried about something like b4, bishop e6, hitting the pawn on c4, b5, bishop takes c4 from black. So basically... You know, they're going to lose something on C6, but so much gets traded that at the end, Black doesn't have any targets left over there. They get their bishop and their rook developed. and uh, Active pieces win games. Yeah. So as I can tell my students that a lot. That's they correct. get into things. So, so he plays very, very simple B3. But that also means that there's no immediate pressure coming from him against Black. Um, 
I mean, there are ways to still try and follow their black a little bit long term with like a bishop on e3 saying, hey, what do you do about a7? Maybe if you play a6 at some point, then knight a4, and he's got the b6 and c5 squares to try and bother black a little bit. So there are still like a couple little things he can do, but it doesn't feel like he's coming in for a crush. Right? Not at all, actually. I don't see a crush coming in. I actually like this move by Hammer. Hammer comes up. I think Hammer is a very, I would say, interesting player because he comes up with very, very smart ideas, very, very uh, cool ideas that they weren't in a position that wouldn't be your first mind. Wouldn't be your first mind, for instance, for white. Probably could have doubled on the file here. I like this knight a4 move because it's going for knight to c5, and it's very difficult for black to even stop him besides knight to d7. So if knight to d7 happens, I wonder what's the follow-up mm -hmm. for white after knight to d7. Maybe right. uh, I'm assuming he's not going to sacrifice on d7. That was just not a move. It's just not a move. But um, I'm, I'm curious to see what happens really right. after knight to d7. I think so. probably he'd look for doubling on the d file. Um that would probably be the main thing for white to look for there to mm -hmm. sort of threaten that knight. So maybe a move like rook to d6. Um, because basically what black wants to do is if they want to challenge the d file, they want to play f6. Um, but here the rook's hitting that bishop still. So, yikes, yeah, rook d6 is such an annoying move. Actually, so, you can't play f6, yeah, and then you want to get the rook off of d6, so you can't play rook to d8. So yeah, that's why h6 does make a lot of sense. So now you can put the rook on d8 in that same line, maybe knight d7 afterwards, mm -hmm. followed by rook d8 and put in a bishop on f8 to kick the rook if, well, you, if you have to. Well, again, if you play rook d8, you can't play knight d7 because of the bishop on g5. So what he's going to have to do at some point is play h6, which is what he played. Um, he had to either play you know knight d7, rook d6, h6, or h6 right away. Correct. Um, yeah. So yeah, so he did that. One thing that's interesting is that uh, is that uh, Hammer has used so much time so far this game. I notice, you know. Yeah, he um, actually did it last week too. He got in time yeah. trouble. That's what caused him the game against. Um, who played last week? La Joie, the other yes. the the previous rep from the uh, Blitzstreams. Correct. Meanwhile, the first points in the match are scored. It's three to three, so things are tied at the moment. Um. So probably expecting a close match here. I think uh, you know neither of these teams can afford to lose this match. So I expect it to be pretty close. Um, I picked Khan to win this one. How about how about you? Who do you think would? I actually picked the Norway gnomes. The gnomes. To win it. Yeah. I actually picked the gnomes. It's pretty close to a toss up, right? I mean, yeah. I think it's pretty good. So shout out to Chess Win says uh, Canty in the building says Yay! How welcome to the stream. Good morning. What's up, David and James from Matt Smith. Hello, hello. Roop says, we in here, big fella. What's going on, man? And Jigga, good to see you guys. Welcome to the stream. Knight to G4 is on the board. That's an nice. aggressive move. I yeah. like that a lot. like this move. So what are you thinking, David? I think Bishop C5. I mean, you have to get a tempo. Yeah. There. I there think there. he's got to, but he's probably not pumped about it because now yeah. the bishop's where the, uh, where the knight needs to go. Yeah, so he's so kind of like stopping his own threat here. Mm -hmm. We'll probably see H3 and then dropping the bishop back to E3. I'm surprised by Rook C8 being played so fast. Lubezhevsky must be feeling really confident here somehow. Absolutely, especially being four minutes up on time right now against uh, the Hammer Man himself. Mm -hmm. So H3 is going to happen. Knight back to F6. I don't think the move E4 helps Black at all. Um, after White just moves the Rook, then the pawn on E4 will be weak. So just comes back to F6, and he's going to just drop back here to re-threaten Knight C5. And the way Black played Rook C8 made me wonder if his plan was to play B6 here. I think that is the plan. Because I, the Rook would be Because yep. it's defending, defending A7 too, and everything's in C6 is defended. So, But yeah, then think... again, White has Rook D6. So, I mean, it... nice. you know, yeah. when you read somebody's moves, you read that Rook FC8 so fast, you're like, okay, he's thinking defend the pawn with the Rook to play B6. Right. But then you still have to check his idea, even if that seems to be his idea. And Rook D6 looks Man. really, really nice. unpleasant for Black. Honestly, what do you do here? You might have I to don't go know. knight d7 now. Knight d7, rook d6, bishop f8. Because uh, you can't really do much else. I mean, that's that's actually a very, very good observation. After b6, rook d6, he could be in vital trouble there, actually. Especially threatening to double up. The c6 pawn is hanging. There's some issues that he has to handle here. You can't move the a rook either. But it's, uh, you know, it's kind of, I say, double edge. But white has a slight advantage just due to the space. And uh, maybe clear, even easier plans than yeah. black. I mean, for the moment, Black's not really, like, threatening anything. They don't have any play of their own, right? They're just trying to control um, White's idea. So I wouldn't call it uh, double-edged yet. I would say it's kind of like 
we don't yet know if white has a big advantage, but white white's the one trying to create something. Black's just trying to control it. Black's trying to control it, correct. And now it's up to from six. It's a six five right now. So Khan is actually up one point, but there's still a lot of chess left, a lot of games. So let's see exactly what's going to happen now. We are looking at the uh, the game now, and actually Khan is uh, still up on time, two minutes and not four anymore. So he is closing in on time a little bit. He is closing in, but two minutes is still enough um, for an advantage, especially on the clock. Yeah. All right, knight d7 had to be played. There went two minutes, so that was half of his time advantage. And uh, I'm happy to see one fast move from Hammer, you know, after that experience last week where, uh, where I was a little worried about... Uh, his time usage, so good to see some some speed and some confidence there. We're gonna see Rook AD1 next pretty quickly, hitting that knight. And uh, what's the plan? Rook C7 is the plan. Whew. I mean, when you gotta defend something, you gotta defend it by any means. <coughs> All right, Rook to C7, wow. You know, that's pretty tough. That's pretty tough right there. And actually, uh, Matt Smith in the chat says, if Rook to D6, can't black reply with bishop to f8 in that line actually the pawn on c6 is hanging if b6 was played so it would be rook takes c6 rook to c7 is a very annoying move i think like you said black's just playing not to lose anymore which is very difficult to even say of like how did where and how did he go wrong it's not like he really played bad moves here actually now usually in these yeah. lines when i play the king's Indian defense i usually go a6 so I'll, not in this position but early on Mm -hmm. I'll have an a6 or a5 available so you have more counterplay and be able to play b5 in some cases. It's just a different way because black is not dynamic here at all. It's just defending, and it's not fun ever to play a position <laughs> where you're just defending everything. Yeah, he's just hunkered down for the moment, but uh, he set up a good defense, and now um, Hammer's really in the tank trying to figure out how to make any further progress here. Um so you know i see him thinking for a minute i also i'm not sure how white increases the pressure here yeah uh that's a good question let's actually see how he can increase the pressure honestly maybe f4 f4 is aggressive but you need we also need a plan too i mean f4 does look uh interesting i would say f4 maybe i don't know what else i mean he's got two minutes so obviously he's in a think tank trying to figure stuff out too He's, he's always down a lot of time, back down to four minutes again, or that, back down four minutes again on the clock. He plays C5, which I think is very eh, weird, honestly, too. It's very weird. I don't know what, what this is about. Maybe he's grabbing some space. You got to move the knight back to B2 to maybe go to C4. I don't know, man. It's just not, it's not, it's not as easy. It's not clear cut. Yeah, B4 first, absolutely. Just solidify the pawn on C5 so we can move the knight right after. Okay. okay, gaining space with c5 B4. and b4. So now knight c5 is out. So that's dealt with. Um, so the new plan is is what? The yeah, new plan right. is what? Where what is, is, what is, where is the she plan? going right. with this? What is the plan, bro? And actually both sides, I think Black's actually doing fairly well. If he can figure out what to do with the a rook, Black's going to be really good. I think c5 was really bad. And the Norway gnomes just offered a draw. Hammer was like, hey, bro, I could figure this out. Um, wow. You want to go to art school real quick, big fella. Let's just sit down and draw something here. Wow. And he wants a draw. B4. And there it is. They agreed on a draw. They have agreed on a draw in this game out of nowhere. Wow. Big fella. What a high-class yeah. grandmaster defense from Lubyshevsky, huh? Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we not have not seen that yet in the Pro Chess game. League Summer Series. We've seen a lot of things. We've never seen a GM draw. Right. Yeah. The straight-up draw. Okay. And into the second game here, E4, E5 is on the board. Looks like we're going to have a Roy, maybe. Bishop B5 is right into the Roy territory for all the Roy Lopez players out there. I used to play it all of my life. And then he goes Bishop C4, so now we have an Italian game here. Knight to G5, in this case, is now that fried liver stuff that you guys like to play. I've played it before, but it's just not as solid as you think. Bishop to E7, interesting, interesting. I wonder, this is called a quiet game, usually, Italian yep. games, a quiet game. So I am not a fan of this at all. I am not <laughs> a fan because it's like I'm not a quiet player. Like, right. My favorite player is yeah, like, right? Turn so, up the noise. Yeah, turn up the noise. I'm playing Scotch Gambits and like uh, Danish Gambits and all kind of stuff like that. I'm, I'm ready to crush my opponents. So. 
The Gnomes have retaken the lead in this match, 16 to 13. For a second, it was 16 to 12, so they just had a little influx of points. That is correct. They are up right now, 15 to 12. Looks good. Looks good. 17 to 14. So a5 is on the board. He grabbed this this early queen size space, mm -hmm. um, but I actually like Black's position because of uh, I'm a fan of, of attacking, right? So the open rook file looks really nice. It's very intriguing. I probably play like a grand a grand pre fashion with queen to e8 actually here for Black. Queen d7. I am not a fan of this move at all. Queen e8 was actually very very interesting to me. I thought queen e8 was like beautiful. Seventeen to fourteen, right now. Let's see. Can Blitzstream and Hammer going at it? Okay, Queen to D seven is on the board. What is White going to do? You need to develop. So number one move is develop. But he played A six. Wow, he gained he gained a lot of space with this pawn over here, on the Queen side. Knight A three, Knight to C four. I'm assuming. That's an interesting way to develop that. What's the plan for that? Knight a3. He just didn't want to block the bishop, I guess. That makes sense. Wow, so he ran that pawn all the way to a6. Just trying to soften up the light squares a little bit for later. Yeah. Much better now. Thank you. Cool. Everyone, everyone's saying it's better. All right. Well, chat. that worked like Thanks, magic. Guys. Thanks, guys. Everyone. Well, thank you to the little technical angels whispering in the background. Oh, my goodness. Shout out to angels. Let's go. Rook A to E8. So that's nice. He's just uh, playing solid chess here, honestly. He's just like, oh, I'm just going to play solid forever and be boring and try to check me later. Hammer's leaving the queen side behind. I mean, he's getting everything out of there. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably planning to attack on the king side like you want. He's just... I think the first maneuver to attack on the king side that he's thinking of is knight h5 to f4. Correct. And he doesn't want white to hit him with d4 in an unpleasant right. way the moment he plays knight h5. So he wants everything sort of set up so he can go knight h5 and not have a problem with d4 when he does. The problem with knight h5 I always see is actually, you know, tactics as simple as knight takes c5. Just because all oh, the knight is hanging, loose pieces, lose games is what I tell my students. But... It's uh, it's like knight h5 is uh, you can't play there just yet. So I remember when queen e8 with that idea. Yes, the queen wants to go to g6 and stuff, mm -hmm. but it also aids in knight h5 because the knight's able to be defended in those lines. We can play knight f4 and be able to then bring the queen over to g6. I'm just so familiar with those kind of attacks, but this is a uh, very very interesting as you see the knights on c6 defending a7. So I'm not yeah. sure what knight b5 is really about. Oh, it's about tying that knight down so it can't go to the king side and it can't move. Mm. Once this knight is stuck, otherwise, you know, maybe knight d d8, knight f7, whatever. But now this knight is stuck defending a7. If you ever bring this knight into the action in any way after knight takes a7, the pawn's really close to queening, becomes a huge source of counterplay. Because you're imagining this scenario way down the line as white, where black's going to try and come and checkmate your king, right? When they do, you want your counterplay to be something that's actually going to distract them, right? If it's just like, oh, I'm trying to win a pawn, they're like, sure, have at it sure, while I checkmate ahead, you, right? You like. right? But if it's like I'm queening my A pawn in two moves, then it's like, okay, there's a clock on Black's attack. Right, right. I like that. That is 100% correct. And we follow up with H6 here. H6. So this is very interesting stuff. Fabian's very, very strong. As he has, uh, you know, um, Hammer thinking. Hammer's thinking. He's taking precautions. He's like... Yeah, Dude, this guy is good. You know, usually you wouldn't see this hammer. Is like it's a different hammer today. I mean, he's yeah. really not playing any attacking chess. Just like I am trying not to lose to this guy, but he is playing very solid too. If you understand, every piece is working together here. All his pieces are developed in a way. He has a nice center. He can push with d5 at the right moment. Knight h5 now could be a thing. Oh, no, wow. this move he's is strong knight too. H5. That yep. was strong. This move that is strong, strong too. If knight Maybe h5, be, which is oh not played, goodness. guys. Then he oh can grab goodness. that pawn in a7 and just, you know, finish Ooh, the game man. out right. So. That was a beast move. That was a yeah. beast move. This goes so well with the pawn in a6. You know, now he's going yeah, after this light square on c6. His queen also has the c4 square in some cases, hitting e6 and c6 man. and c7. And uh, he may 
he may be getting ready for the move d4 even in some cases like d4 knight good. takes e4 he would have d5. knight a7 oh no d5 doesn't work but yeah, he would have knight take. takes a7 anytime that knight moves away so Yikes. it's a funny way of maybe setting up d4 normally you play rookie one defending your e pawn if you want to play d4 but I guess he's thinking in many cases he'll need to defend like F2 and stuff. He's not sure about spending time cycling away the rook that's sort of next to his king. So he's looking at other ways to set that up. And you might have to go rook D8 here. As, as annoying as it is, like you might have to just have to just bite the bullet and go rook to D8. Or like something or rook back to A8, which is very, very terrible. I just Oof. think something's like it's it's ugly to play, right? What do you play here? D5. D4 is actually a legit threat because the knight cannot move. From, from f6 so you have to like defend something which is a queen maybe rook to d8 so at least you can play knight h5 next move i mean he definitely does not want to move that rook back to you know d8 or c8 or a8 i mean <laughs> he, he left that behind right he left yeah, that life behind right, he's right. not like planning oh, to go man. back to it like two moves later <laughs> and i had a i had a coach at one time tell me one two one, one time too like uh the problem sometimes is a lot of times people hate to be wrong in chess you yeah know? like you have to like you know, I have to go back. And then you admit yeah. to your opponent that you actually were wrong there. And yeah, nobody like likes to admit that, like, wrong. anywhere, right? In chess <laughs> yeah. or elsewhere in their lives. Chess in life, and yeah, correct. But I think yes. one other option you could try and go for would be something like bishop d8 and rook f7. It's a little bit slow, and it does allow d4 for a moment. So maybe he mm -hmm. doesn't want that. But that's one, that's one other contortion he might have available that would defend stuff and maybe still leave him poised for the kingside attack that he's thinking about yeah this is uh this is not easy for black to think about as you can see he's down on time again fabian's been very good on the clock here yeah he's uh been both up both games on on time here and actually this position here not that he's slightly better but he is increasing the pressure he is increasing the pressure because black's pieces are very well coordinated and the chemistry is very good with between the pieces but uh white is still you know i guess one tempy tempo behind on development he just has to move his bishop but he's uh he's doing quite well in trying to increase the pressure here and also keeping the ball in his court as the norway gnomes uh hammer here is still thinking being yeah. almost two minutes down on time i mean actually like an interesting thing it looks like blacks you know developed a lot more than white but actually this rook on a1 is in a sense Active. already participating in the game because he's opened so much space on the a file for it to have an influence on things right and uh, the bishop on c1 is kind of on an ideal post as well, controlling a long diagonal and out of the way. So in a sense, even though he hasn't spent moves developing these three pieces on the back rank, they've kind of, like, he's played the game in a way such that they're kind of well-placed on their starting squares. That's correct. So right, um, and it's very, very rare. I mean, absolutely rare. Yeah. So You're a bit, a, a bit unusual, but uh, that can be done. And overall, there's no feeling like White's lacking in development. His pieces are overall coordinated, and they've got access to different parts of the board very quickly if they need it, which is kind of one of the main things you want from your pieces. And That's... White's actually very uh, dominating on the queen side. And if we notice, man, Hammer's almost down four minutes on time. He's still thinking. Yeah. Queen to c8. He found a move here. Right. Queen to c8. Very interesting. I don't understand it, and I don't like it. <laughs> well, basically, he's trying to get out of the way of that queen on a4, getting out of her view, right? And uh, so he's maybe preventing d4 for the moment. Maybe. He hopes he is. Um, and, you know, there was no tactic yet from the queen attacking the knight. No knight takes d6, c takes d6, or anything like that. But white very confidently following up with queen c4, putting more pressure. Fast. He's going to have Fast. to come back to d7. Uh, yeah, and, and, and then it might be, I mean, easily, easily this could be another draw. Fabian could just go back queen a4, and then and that's what he did. Queen d7, he can go queen a4, and they can call this a draw here, back to art school again. So Don't go back, Fabian. Happens. Let's see what you got, man. Let's see. Let's see. Of course, Fabian. And there it is. Queen oh, a4, man. Four, big fella, come on now. Is this what we going to see today? That's not a move. <laughs> that's not a move. Come on, man. Are you serious? Wow. Wow. The Blitzstream have a small lead in the match now. For the first time, you know, a lead that's more than like one or two points here or there for either team. 37 to 29 is an eight-point lead for Fabian's team. Actually, I mean, I think repeating once was a great idea because, you know, Hammer, he's going to be feeling that pressure, right? He's like higher rated. He's 2650. His team's a couple points behind in the fan club match. So right. if you make a quick repetition and the guy spent 
four minutes to play queen c8. And you're like, do you want to play queen c8 again to make a draw or do you want to do something else? Even if Hammer played queen c8 here, Fabian doesn't have to take that draw. He can say That's thanks right. for thinking another minute or two on that move, but That's right. but yeah. now I'm playing rookie one. Now I'm going to play rookie one. I'm going to switch it up. I found something different. And there, as you see, there is one no anyway. draw here. They're not going to art school. Let's no. go. It's about to get crazy. I love the fact that black can now double on the file here. I am a fan of black's position because I understand. I've played these positions many a lot. Just uh, understanding how to attack on the king side. I'm a relentless attacker. So <laughs> after I double the rooks, I'm moving a knight and sacking on f3 and thinking about everything else later. Yeah. Uh, that's usually uh, what you know I would like to do here. And it looks like black has a chance to do so with uh, doubling the rooks. But still, the issue is this knight on b5 and a queen on a4. I mean, what? What a uh, pay, uh, like how he paralyzes the position here. Yeah, is white. Even he's threatening d4 now because the pawn's so, uh, defended. So James, if I had a line to Fabian, what I'd ask him is why couldn't White play d4 without rook to e1 last move? Mm, why did you not just play d4 right away, my very man? Because question. you're correct. If um, let's right. say e takes d4, c takes d4, knight takes e4, knight takes a7. White's like in the driver's seat. I mean, yeah. you're, you're winning. You have to be winning. Right. It's plus, it's plus everything. So like, was there a winning. reason he couldn't do that? I don't know. And uh, we don't have time, I guess, because the game's going on. But I think yeah. to me that's like a big question because I thought part yeah, of the genius right. of this whole thing was to play D4. Was right? he could just play it was, D4. It was brilliant. It honestly was brilliant. It was brilliant. So now Hammer tucks that bishop on F8. I would have thought that guy okay. wanted to go to D8 because yeah, now he's in the way of the rooks, seven. right? Right. That'll be an extra covering C7, access to G5 or H4. So now I guess he can't do the double rooks on the F file. I know you're pissed about that. You like to you like to put everybody on that F file. Are we trying to win or do we want to like sit and paint all day in art school for these little draw? I I don't do it. No, it's not. I don't. It's not a move. It's not a thing. It's not a thing. It's sack pieces and made people, but. I mean, not, not all the time here, but of course, I think Black does have an, a slight initiative, maybe even as drastic as G5 and <laughs> at some point, because Bishop F8 maybe covers the H6 square with G5 and G4 now. That's true. Maybe, Bishop uh, F8 does go up. well with G5, at least. I will say that. It, it covers the king in a different way. It covers that H pawn. And Bishop D2, Fabian's just not doing anything other than like hoping that uh, Hammer's going to hang himself on a chess clock. <laughs> he's, just like, he's just like, Bishop D2. Rookie one, bishop oh, c one. I'm not going right. to play d4 till you got like 10 seconds left to think about it. Right. So and hammers. Knight h5. Here we go. Now yeah. I'm hype. Hammers now like I'm I've hype. got a plan. I've Let's got a plan go. this whole time. But knight h5. It's hmm. about to be fun. Finally d4. Go. Finally. Good analysis. Good to remember. Thanks, Matt Smith. Jigga, Jigga says Canty. That's not a move. You have gone off the deep end. That's right. <laughs> Come on, man. What's up, Caesar? And go big or go home. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Canty's tilted. Yes, Whoa. I was. I was Whoa. definitely tilted. There that's is. what you Rook wanted, man. Three. That's what we wanted. That's what we that's came to what see, you guys. wanted. It's about to get real in here. I'm sweating, and I'm not. But this is this is real. This is real. This is Knight what we takes want to see. D6. Knight, Knight takes D6. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that is a move, though. You got to fight D6 fire D6. with fire, right? Don't just sit You're around. Correct. You're correct. He didn't go for it. He didn't go for it. I guess it's like mating threats, honestly. But how? I mean, the knight can nah. always be snapped off easily after bishop takes f4. Right, so, and anytime the queen comes to f3, real. he can play rook e3 and cover some some squares with the rook. So I think you want to get that queen in. You want to, I mean, either queen c4 or knight takes d6. You know, do something for white. That's correct. That's correct. Because, uh, yeah, that's that's a good move. I think knight takes d6 was very challenging to black's uh, everything. The I think problem maybe with knight d6 is it bishop does develop that bishop on f8, right? I was so just then, about to say that. I didn't play rook f8. And then then we take on c6. Oh. Yeah, then maybe, maybe, I mean, he wants to trade on d4 at some point to open his bishop, but he doesn't want to let white play e5. That's going to be Ooh, a delicate yikes. balance. Man. Maybe queen f3, rook e3, queen g4, king h1. I don't know. I like white, you know. It's... Oh, wait, there's not even queen f3 because the rook on e8 is hanging. Rook, rook's hanging, yeah. So knight takes d6 was probably oh, wow. quite good. Knight Na takes c7 is on the board. It's getting wild here. Rook to c8. Well, not too much. Queen to <gasps> d7. This might be lost, big fella. I think he yeah, jumped yeah, off yeah. the deep end of the bow. It might be a wrap. So he knight not set up for this. What about knight f6? What about he knight f6? Ready. Knight f6, uh, that is a m Oh, queen takes e6. And then gg. And then rook the c7. Rook c7. Oh, you're right. But he, yeah. he actually just took knight f6. Oh, maybe you could just take on d6, though. But d6. He just sacked a second rook? He did. What is he? He did. He did. What is he thinking? He did. Hammer. He did. <laughs> Heard the search, send the stretcher. He's jumped off the deep end. Absolutely, he's send done, man. He's done. There's no way you can just sack two rooks like that. 
I mean, he's so, got a yeah. bishop on f8, a knight yeah. on e7 that can't move because of a queen trade. You can't just, you can't you can't just can't hand out rooks. This is, this is crushing for Fabian right now. As the oh, my Cambus goodness. Blitzstream going off right now. They also are up on everything, 41.5 to 33.5. This could be an upset win here. I actually had a Norway known to win this mm -hmm. one. Blitzstream so holding happens. an eight-point lead for like five or ten minutes here in the club match That's now. correct. Now, Black is really not all the way over yet. If he can get knight g6 and knight f4 in, he's okay. He's okay. But, I, I would say if he can get knight g6 and knight f4 in, he's got a check. I wouldn't say he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> he can check. say he checked him he's once before check. he lost. Yeah. That's all he got. He's, he's got to check. He can say we got a quick view of the king's, you know, tail as he Black. as he as he had to run for a moment. But, ooh. Pawn takes. Pawn takes. Pawn yeah, takes just a seven and now queen he's like, the a pawn. Queen. Let's go. Queen another one and now knight g six. He's bringing that in, so he's trying to go for mate threats here. But it's going to be very difficult once we bring the rook to g one. We can even allow the check, snap one of the knights, and go king h one, and we mm -hmm. should be fine. Yep. Yeah. Unless knight h4, though. Knight h4 is very scary, actually. So oh, maybe, we uh, found the threat. Knight h4. Yeah, maybe maybe queen e3, then. <laughs> oh, you can't. A rook can't. e3. Oh, my goodness. You you might, you might still got to be careful. You okay. Rook e3, knight f4. Still a threat. Yeah, still a threat, big fella. He is, uh, mm. he is definitely mm. strong here. And he's closing the gap. Knight h4 is a legit threat, guys. And it's, you have to be very, very careful. Maybe queen takes b6, knight h4, king f1 instead. So then after queen takes you at least got some time to run. Yeah, it's true. That's knights are short for? knights are short range pieces, right? So if you run a little bit, the knight's gonna have to catch up. That's exactly what he went for, guys. Queen takes b6, knight h4, king f1. And now we okay. see what happens. So if queen takes f3, honestly, you could just push the pawn and say, hey, well, you know, got another queen. Even coming. throwing even throwing queen e6 check just to get your queen onto the light squares, which is where white's weak. Cover uh, some of those nice, light squares, nice. then run the a pawn. Very smart, um, absolutely. It covers queen h3, too. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Somebody in Hammer's chat saying, like, you might want to leave some pieces for the end game, but uh, yeah. obviously he's not planning on an end game here. He's trying to yeah, he's not trying to finish this one now too. in the beginning. Oh, man. Was going to get a second cup of coffee, but this game in Pruis and Canty got me. Go going off has woke me up that's nice man that's yeah yeah, yeah. Right there. much and better to get woke off your you know your experiences than off of some chemicals that's correct correct king h1 and, oh king f1 and it's 30 seconds for hammer here he's gonna go down he is going to go down here you're um, calling this one already the a pawn's going all the way it's going all the way we're just pushing the dogs just a stroll in the park some simple stroll in the park all the way down knight takes f3 that is knight a move i'm just gonna push the pawn got a little bit of a threat You'd allow knight d2 check. Just you can queen. have it. You can have, it. have it. You can have it. You want my rook too? I'll get. I'll put it on b1 for you. I'll just yeah. put it you want the rook too? I'll get you it play rook e to b1 here. Like, come yeah, on, I'll take them. Take, take them both. You can take have them both. You like here, sir. It's you a joke. Over. It's over. I just put his queen near his king. That's another way of winning a game like this, right? Is you just be like. So my queen's near my king. That means you can never outnumber me with attackers to defenders at this point. That's correct. Yep. And then the pawn's just going. Hammers in, in oh, bishop oh, c5, that's oh. not a move. I'm just he had one more piece to throw at him, and, and he threw it. Oh. And he's and like, he, you know what? You can he's have like, you got the queen too. You Are you kidding it. me? I'm generous today. You can have it. That's insane. That's insane. That's I mean, now, now, he, now he's queening a pawn, but really he's only getting a bishop out of queening his pawn. Mm -hmm. So so was that really? I mean, honestly, it didn't really go as far as uh, as... as strong as we thought it was and we just run the king back uh to the other side of the board back to civilization on the other side i guess and so we're good we're good to go king d2 and, and then I'm those knights are just on the h file and you're like what's over there <laughs> right hey what's over here guys knight f6 and knight takes c4 is a thing so just run the yeah. king king he c2 i'm out your way have a good day right king c2 i'm gone and also rook a4. a4 even better even better defend upon give him nothing knight to g4 what are you threatening maybe the f2 pawn knight we takes do need f2 would be the white, idea though. It's a good move. Honestly, it's just like, what do you, you gotta, we gotta protect stuff. He's fighting hard. I mean, he's yeah. really fighting. He's got three but, seconds uh, on the clock. He's certainly trying. Right. Queen to c6, two seconds on the clock, and he gained some time. Yeah. Well, he's got two rooks against the knight here. So if he doesn't know how to convert that, he's gonna be pretty upset later on. <laughs> Absolutely. King to c2 and two rooks versus the knight with six seconds on the clock here. I've been I've been known to blow it with an extra two pawns or something, but like two rooks, 
Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you really got to be something got to be wrong there. We got people for that if you need it. If you really drop that one. But back to civilization says chess one. Yeah. Queen so, the, Queen the B oh, pawn 2 here. To the stream. Queen the B pawn 2. I don't know what's the plan. Uh, it's just sack everything. I mean, you know, Rick takes F6. You better move your knight cuz I'm going to take it cuz it's there. <laughs> it's there. I'm just going to get it rid of it. Queen F3 instead. Ah, uh, yeah, trying to chase him back. Now the H pawn can't move, but I mean he's got to have a plan to win too. I mean is the plan B four? Is the plan Rook A seven and Rook G two? You're right. Yeah, actually that should win. Rook A seven should do it here. All right. And if you have to play ninety eight yeah. in any situation like this, it's over. So it's nice he kind of trapped this queen on H six, right? I like how he sort of chased the queen back, took away all her squares while sort of starting to target where he wants to win. That's correct. And actually, uh, the the winning score is fifty four and a half. We'll, we'll clinch the win. For uh, for this, so it's forty eight to thirty six currently. They're getting there. Uh, don't we just take on G seven? Yeah, sure, take on G seven, take everything. Oh, he's still playing. Oh, we still got hope here. There's still hope. Check King here, and he's still moving. Yeah, I guess he's in a zone. Sometimes you know, I realize this when I'm losing too. Sometimes <laughs> I just go into a zone where I'm like, I'm just going. You just playing, and you don't even know why. You're just like, you know what? What happened? When, it's bad when you start thinking about what happened. Like. Oh yeah. my goodness! You know what has life come to? Oof. Is this what real life really is about? You is this is this yourself. all there really is? That's what you start asking yourself, and I think that's what he was doing here, and that's why he kept playing on. Because I do it all the time. All right, we're gonna watch Crazy K against Double Pony or Double Pony. And let's see where that is. That's way down at the bottom. Okay. That's way down at the bottom since uh, since uh, Fabian has completed a one and a half one half win against Jan Ludwig Hammer, so turning up really big for Khan today. Yikes! Was not playing any games today. Lead up to and was fourteen like, My name points. Is Fabian. And crust. Lead up to fourteen and points, and uh, yeah, I think um, I think Khan they need like three or four more points to win this match if they win it. I think they're pretty much going to make it into the playoffs if they win this, I think. Yeah. So they're almost there. Let's see how Double Pone is doing. It looks like it's equal material. Uh, yep, I actually like Crazy K's position with this yeah. monstrous bishop. I mean, Beautiful. this is uh, attacking 101. I was even looking at knight takes f7, which is not a move, but you have to consider it. Um, also, bishop to f6. I mean, there's so many things. Even like queen to c1 just to back up to c3. All kind of ideas here. I love this kind of stuff, so... This is my yeah. realm. My <gasps> realm. Oh no! Black gives up that bishop. That diagonal yep. is just even more this completely a hundred percent controlled. Absolutely. What's he thinking about? Recapture. Yeah. <laughs> There's How not, crazy are you, man? Just about. recapture. Absolutely. Well, he is fifteen hundred. So shout out to anyone sixteen hundred and below in the chat. Absolutely. So this is something that you should be aware of after you take in B, etc. Looking at this bishop on the dark square is uh, on the dark square diagonal is actually just a monster here and it should be made in a few moves here. So our goal yeah. is to figure out how to get a piece. <laughs> Queen E5 spot. will do it. Yep. Queen I'd e5 already checked that Knight out. D4 doesn't work and it doesn't. So it does not. Queen, Queen E5. five. Then you've C5, got to play pawn C5, C5 and you just take it. Yep. And then Knight to E6, Queen C3. GG. Yeah. So that'll finish the game. I'm a little bit disappointed. I would have, um, I would have preferred that he didn't allow this Queen E5 move. Because I wanted to see White, you know, play something like Rook F3, Queen H4, Queen takes H7. That's, I know. I was waiting for that. That's that what I like. right? You know, the sack on, on yeah. H7, Rook H3, Rook H8 mate. Oh, my goodness. I just did that actually in, uh, a few days ago. Actually, I remember that. I'd love to see, you know, like a 1500 down on board 40, you know, show off his, like, his tactical mates. So I did be nice to today. see. I did my puzzle rush. That's what he said. Yeah. Hello, everyone. What's up, Sean Ferry? Never mind, we're back to me. Yep, I won, although team is about to lose. That's okay, Steve is five. At least you yeah. contributed. At you least contributed you contributed. To the points, man. Oh, Khan so, is one point away now. 53 and a half. 53 and a half. One point away from the magic number and the playoffs. The magic number and the playoffs for the big boys. Oh, my goodness. This is a Queen E5. Here. That was strong. I mean, Honestly. basically, Crazy K1 just played a fabulous game. He lost the first game to Double Pone, but nah, came the back second with game. Here. Very, very strong. Always good to be able to come back. Correct. Always Even good to be able to come here. back. Oh, this was brilliantly played. And with this like F4 move, EF4, Queen F4, you know, leaving the knight oh, hanging wow. because he had Queen F7. Beautiful. So, that I mean, everything great. is like strategically really and tactically here. sound this game. 
Dang. Oh, oh, man. Hitting that man like that. Queenie 5, why do you have to do him like that? Maybe he wants this to play board lying. one next time. This Maybe. Maybe yeah. board one is ready for him. <laughs> he might be ready. 92, King H. Even King F2 actually is the strongest yep. here. You could just take it. You could also walk away. Like, you know, the whole walking away from an explosion thing. And, yeah. you know, just like, just walk away from that with your king and they still can't stop the checkmate. Black's resource is going to be the move F6. I mean, resource because uh, yes. it doesn't help him. But, like, technically it's the only move that's going to avoid maiden one. Mm -hmm. So he's going to play F6. And then white's going to have queen E6 check. The king's going to have to go to the diagonal of the B2 bishop. You take the knight in peace. Right? I'm just previewing things for us here. Mm -hmm. Right, and then later White just takes on F six with his bishop or his rook or whatever. Even the queen will probably do. She could sack herself and win. No, yeah, she could do whatever. Extreme Dota won both their matches. Congratulations, Extreme Dota. We don't yet know who's going to be the top fan of Division D. We will find out in the next week. Um, you know when uh, the the commissioner or vice commissioner Isaac has gone through and checked out people's streams and their blog posts and stuff like that. He'll figure out who, who wins that $250 cash prize for best fan in the division. But uh, winning your matches is a good move. Excellent. That's excellent. And now King goes to G7, and like we said, he's just on a dark square here. King takes E2. is just monstrous. Actually, Bishop takes F6. is uh, Almost. Yeah, it's winning. It's actually everything's winning. Yeah. It's like, everything's winning. Pawn takes... Pawn takes might be the strongest, actually, setting up mating threats. I mean, yeah. really bad mating threats here. Yeah, pawn, pawn takes, takes is really strong. If rook takes, check. You play king takes e2, check. And yeah, then and that's, they can't defend nasty. f6. Yikes. Um, Yikes. And if pawn takes king h6, you know, we know he's going to get mated out there. He is in a think tank here. Now, he needs to be careful because he's getting very close on time. At, at first, he was actually yeah. two minutes up. Now he's like 30 seconds up. Even though he's completely winning here, but a lot of times you will fall into trouble if you think way too long here. And he did go with pawn takes f6. So if king h6, the king is out in the middle of the street, and it's just not fun. So rook takes f6 check was a move. Now let's see what he does. Let's see if he'll find king takes e2. Very strong move here. Crazy K. Crazy K. Doing it. There it is. There 55 is. points. Khan just did it. They hit 55 yeah. points. Khan has clinched so, a spot. So I think they pretty much clinched a spot, right? Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. I suppose the Blizzard could still get up to 10 today in theory, push them to third place to that, twi uh, to that Twitch fan vote that's coming up after our show today to pick between the third place teams. So there's still a chance for the Blizzard to have a perfect day and pass them, but uh, they've... They've done a good job here today. They're going to win this game. I'm going to click over to another game of interest to me, which is Cryptal as white against Alms Chess. Alms Chess, he's up to 2008. Very, very strong for both yeah. these guys. That was a game from down near the bottom of the Whoa. boards of the Whoa. match, though you would have never known it with the way they were playing. They were playing a great Man. game there. But this is a game from up near the top board, so you can see what some of the highest rated 2000 level fans are playing like. It's and getting wild here. It's getting wild. Bishop d8. White has recently sacked a knight. Oh, yeah. And is, is going material. on the attack here. I mean, this is getting serious. Yeah. Bishop d8 might be the only move. Well, how do you follow up with bishop to Let's d8? Let's preview just... it. White played knight takes d5, leaving the bishop to just take the knight on f3 and get in on his king. White's king not looking good, but black's king is in even more immediate danger. What's he going to do? Bishop d8, I suppose? Yeah, and then after bishop d8, what do you do, knight f4? Because your knight is hanging, so this might not be, honestly, as solid as it looks. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's certainly a nice risk of a, of a of a failure on this sacrifice, right? It could, Correct. it could not, it might not work out. We're waiting to find out. If bishop d8, you could put the knight on f6. You're walking into a pin, but you're always going to have checks um, against the king to try and get out of that. So it's going to be pretty pretty complicated. Correct. It's pretty complicated. It's very double-edged, I would say. You may need to keep your bishop on e7, actually, after bishop d8 and bishop e7 and bring the last piece into the game and finish, try to, like, figure this out one by one. You don't have a dark square bishop for white, so maybe put in a king, like a maneuver, bishop d8, bishop e7, rook d8, king g7, king h8. And okay, then there's bishop d8. The bishop there's bishop d8. Now it's the big choice for white, you know. just Wait a minute. Let me go back a move. 
Oh, yeah. White didn't have knight b6 before because the rook was covering the rook. Okay, so he had yeah. to give the rook check. King f8. And then here, if he played knight takes b6, black would have the defense of king takes e7. E7, yeah. Okay, so he never had an easy win. He comes back to here. The bishop escapes and defends this. And uh, white's looking for... Something. He's just looking for something here. Yeah. Knight takes f6 just is not going to be enough. Well, if he um, retreats knight f4, I feel like he doesn't have enough. So he might have to go for the risky knight f6, getting himself tied up. Yeah, because after knight f4, there's queen f7. You double up, and you didn't really get much from the double up there. If knight f6, um, the key move is going to be king f7 from black. The king gets out of the way of any knight checks, so the knight can't move as easily. And he starts attacking f6 and e6 himself, right? Just sort At of, the same time. Sometimes uh, you just got to do the, piece, do the yeah. work yourself, so... Yikes! This is this is like out. This it's hmm. very close to being so. This sack it may just not takes a blunder. May not work out. May not Black. come through. I'm not seeing anything good for White here. You like to sack. You you see anything oh, for yeah, White absolutely. or or, I don't, or man, do you miss fire I mean, here? Honestly, there's just not enough material. I, I just mm -hmm. don't see enough material here. It's uh, especially if I had a bishop, it'd be even a light square bishop. I'd be fine here, but like uh, like I don't have enough. And these rooks are can only do so much because my A rook is so far out of the game. Even though it's one move, rook A to E1, but my knight's hanging. And this is uh, it's not enough. I'm not trying to give up both my rooks for the queen by going rook A E1. And then maybe like check them, which I don't even need to take the rook. I could play king F7. So there's uh, there's not enough. There's not enough. And as you see, he's at 34 seconds here trying to figure out what to do here. Knight takes F6 doesn't work. Only move you could really go for is knight F4. Because it gives you a, a threat, and then I can bring the other rook into the game. But that's all I have, and only yeah. hoping, you know, playing hope chess is the only thing I can do here now. Yeah. So his time ticking down. Thirty seconds, fifteen seconds, and he goes for knight f six. Well, he's given six. Black a lot of time to find king f seven, and he bashes it out. He's like immediately. Super saw fast. this coming, move, and I'm Let's ready. Start a new one. That was not a move. Start so a new now, one. Just reset. Now white's out, right? Because black can play bishop takes out. f6 takes here. F6, He's planned it all. Oh, rook check. Whoa. Yeah. King oh, f8. my goodness. That's a nice move, but king f8, though. Yeah. Yeah, it looks good. Looks it, good. Man, it is. It would strong. be pretty if black had to take it with his bishop because you get if, queen oh, e7, man. this kind of like disgusting mate. little smush mate <laughs> where you're down so much material. But unfortunately, there's oh, just king goodness. f8. And, yeah. You know, it's... He plays queen f4. He's still not giving up, though. He's like, nope, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up, which he shouldn't. You know, Black is definitely – he should win this, but he has to – he got to be accurate. He got to be accurate because he could even get almost a perpetual – Yeah, maybe moving the bishop to c6 is actually fine. And if you have something like rook to e6, uh, no, he can move rook e to c6. No, that's made on the back ranker almost. There's so many – luckily, like, white has a nice little maneuver here. His queen and two rooks are doing everything it needs to be doing right now. They're yeah. doing pretty, pretty well. Queen d6. Oh my goodness. This man, I told you, like something something might be lost here. You might be lost. How do you get out of this? Let's How see. How do you get out of this, David? Can't take that. Threatening double checks. Can't move the king. Oh, Whoa. Oh my goodness. Where did that come from? <laughs> you might have jumped off the deep end. Somebody help him, please. <laughs> wow, with five seconds on the clock? Five seconds. Finds this thing. All right, arms oh, chest. You got a minute. Goodness. You got a minute. I know your palms are getting sweaty here oh, for a second. My goodness. Right. This is one of those where you're thinking, like, is this what life? So is? how does he lose if he plays bishop f7? Let's just like ask that question, uh, right? Double, Sometimes double, you just mate made on the back rank. How? Oh no, it's not. Rook king g7. You are right. Yeah. King g7. So my can he be okay? Rook takes queen. Sometimes shot, you no. got to just clear your head and start wow. making moves, right? You're like, yeah, oh, there's right. all these yeah, weird I've threats. Oh, I'm so I've scared. Just try yeah. something. So I Bishop F7. Myself. Oh, he found it. He found it. Yeah, that was ugly. Three, two, Ouch. one. Rook check. Yeah, that doesn't do anything. King G7, no. he's out the way. Luckily, he found this nice maneuver here. Bishop F7, he's out of the way. He's All right. Out of the way. And now he's All out of right. the woods, guys. He's out of the woods. He's back to civilization. Everything looks good on the other side of town as he's gone. Whew. He is gone. Man, that was scary. That, that was, was absolutely scary. scary. What a game. Absolutely. That was scary absolutely. for a second a game, there. Yes, sir. Tic Tac, though, that's right, chest win. Roses are red. Max Mill says, palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy, says Mac. MC, mm -hmm. that was great. Mom Spaghetti, what? Saturday, Danny Jokes, son, says Chica. Funny. So, yeah, this is over. Five seconds on the clock. He's still going to push it oh! up. Whoa. Just Jack as long as peace. Gave one back. Four seconds on the clock. He now it's not over. Rook G4 check. Queen F6. Rook G4 is a legit threat. 
Now it's immediately not over because he's got a bishop against two pawns. That's basically close. I mean, when you're playing like three second chess, it's like it might as well be even. Yeah, that's right. That's right. All it takes is a slip up. All it takes is a slip and it could be over, folks. Yeah. G4. You got to make a move. He made a move. He plays H4 instead. Maybe going for H5, H6. Okay, he's out of the way. Two seconds on the clock. He got to move. Queen to C3. Rook takes B3, strong move. Queen A1, maybe. Queen C2 instead. <sighs> Looking Rook for D7. Rook takes G3, nope. He's, he's gaining time here, too. This game is wild. Yeah. Queen C7, Queen F5, okay. Bishop G6, but I don't know if he's going to see that. Yeah, that's tough to see in this time for him. Rook there. Both Rooks on the back rank, big fella. Both of them. Be very careful here. Queen G6, check him. Grab that A-pawn. Just grab the A-pawn. Oh, you're right. Without I the A-pawn, yeah. black basically can't win. So wow. it's as easy as that for white. You just got to get rid of the Look pawn. This game. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Crypto is like, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Man. I brought the, I brought the work today. He's been fighting with like three seconds on his clock for like seconds. 15 you know moves in this complicated here? position. This is getting frustrating for Alms Chess. Frustrating. Psychologically, I think Black's losing. Absolutely, Black's losing psychologically because he he had this great position. Queen d8 was forced like, you know, to defend scary. this stuff, and now yeah, Queen f8. If he moves the bishop, keeping he him could tied be up. Made it. Well, yes, he has Queen f6. So yeah. you got to check him, and then Queen f6. Oh, uh, that might force a queen trade. Yep. Yeah, Queen f6. Forces yeah, because f2's hanging. So now well, we get the next phase of the game. After the crazy middle game wow. comes a tricky end game. Look at this. Now this man, this game might not end. This might not end because <laughs> with the bishop and rooks, he said he, uh, arms chest is offered a draw, and mm -hmm. crypto says nope, not today, big fella. Even though I'm down a piece, I don't even care. Declining the draw care. down the piece. Down what? The piece. Uh, okay, he's a boss. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. He's a boss. He don't even care. He doesn't even care. Okay, Absolutely. but if He's anyone can, if anyone can win, in theory, in a grandmaster versus grandmaster match, it would be black. I mean, oh yeah, they don't have a lot of pawns left to go with. White should be able to draw this, I think. But if there would be anyone trying to win, it would normally be black. Man, Crypto played super strong. I mean, being down two pieces to come back here and have yeah. this kind of end game. This is a good technique, everybody, to learn. Attack the pawns from behind with your bishop. Keep the keep your eye on the pawn. It keeps the king from activating himself. So now you want to, you know, be putting the bishop on the b1 to g6 diagonal probably here. Yeah, and that's a draw. He's just going to maneuver the bishop back and forth. You can't make any progress. And as soon as you push the pawn or anything, it's just a straight-up draw here. White I would say it's hard to there's a run. risk oh, that white could play f6, which is a bad idea. Now that's all the white did. pawns are blockaded, so and that's the risk for white. Square. He queens on a light square at the, on h1, so yeah. you know you got to be careful. The black king can come to e6 with the bishop on h5, covering the f pawn. Yep, yeah, I was just about get to say that, that king yeah, up. Start swinging in. He might have jumped off the deep end, guys. This could be a way of how not to play an in game, folks. Wait, now he's so far away, he can't even defend his H pawn. Where is his king going? Oh my goodness, he has jumped off the deep end. Send a stretcher to his address. That is not a move, big fella. Not today. He. Oh my lost. goodness. Oh my goodness. If he went to how D6, King that? G5 was losing, so he had to come back and defend this. But now he'll just get Sugsfanged out by the bishop on E6. I mean. Man, I mean, what a game! What a game, guys! What a game! And then it's straight up Zug Zwang and it's over. Take on G5. Take on G5. G5. That's easy enough. No, man. No. No. Oh, my goodness. Do not Yo. do it like that. <laughs> Scaring everybody. Uh, the Woo, luckily, uh, he's okay. Yeah. Take on G5. There we go. Okay, he figured it Run out. Run that H and pawn. There we go. It's over. It's over. And he's it's done over. it. There's the <clears> KO. Oh, my goodness. Crypto is so mad here. Wow. Absolutely. Because he, he should have taken the draw, guys. And you have to know. You have to know what kind of position you have. That's why I highly recommend yeah. you study your end games. Highly recommend it. Because if he would have knew that this is a draw, you should That's not amazing. push. He you know, got confident. He was feeling like his own god mode, right? Because like yeah. he played that whole middle game with three seconds on the clock. He was like down two pieces. He clawed his way all the way back in to Almost a drawn position. Game, you know, he's and, like, I can't lose. There's no way I can lose. Yeah. There's no way. It's like if and I can't lose it. down two pieces with three seconds on my clock, there's no way I'm going to lose an end game. And, and he uh, yeah, That's he lost it. it. Wow, crazy in the chat. 556AR15 says, Legendary stream with I am Pruis and NM Canty. You in for a treat? That's right, big fella. Turn up. Hey, Canty and David. What's up, Balaji? How are you, bro? Welcome. 
So that's the final score, 60 to 48 for the Blitzstream. And uh, awesome. big, big, uh, big play from Man. Fabian Lubezewski on the top yeah. board, right? Fabian right. really, really came out strong for the Blitzstream. And uh, we've got the new... We've got the new standings here already, showing eight points for the Blitzstream. Very, very good total already. Um, we'll see if Lubezewski can add to that in the four-player four knockout that's coming up in a little bit here. That's our next match. Will be Sweet. the will be the knockout. Um, and uh, yeah, if he can add to that at all, they'll be they'll be in great shape. The only team that can catch them for that playoff spot now is the Minnesota Blizzard, who have yet to play today. If they can knock out the top team, the Chess Bras, they could potentially get all the way up to to where Khan is at. If Tang delivers the speed chess, let's That's see. Right. right now, this is what's coming up: the knockout battle. Sarich against Hammer, Libyshevsky against Tang. I would assume that if Libyshevsky beats Tang in the first round of this, that that will be it. Khan would get second place for sure, right? Because he'd be okay. assuring Khan of at least two more points, which gets them to 10 points. He would be making the maximum score for Minnesota four points if they if Tang got third place and if the team won the, the match. So then their max score would be eight. So that game on its own will decide um, for sure that, that second, third spot between Khan and the Blizzard. Um so we'll Absolutely. have that on the one hand, and then on the other hand, we'll have Sarich against Hammer, the two super high-rated GMs, you know, twenty-six fifty plus, and uh, yeah, we'll see how we'll see how that goes. I'm excited yeah, to Tang's see Ivan Sarich play. Turn up this time, I think I have a big, big uh, eye on Tang's game. I think yeah. Tang is going to take down Libazeski and actually a uh, Hammer is uh, going to go down to see Ivan. That's if Tang does, prediction. it'll keep that drama going to the last minute, right? Because if That's Tang right. bests Libyshevsky, then that will always still mean that uh, the Blizzard have a chance to catch up with the Blitzstream in that uh, in that match against the Chess Bras, right? I mean, if he yeah. beats Libyshevsky, then he scores at least two points for the Blizzard, gets them up to six, so they're within, within three points of Khan, and then it comes down to that match between the Chess Bras and the Blizzard at the end. Hmm. So, yeah, definitely, definitely a critical match. I mean, normally all eyes would be on, you know, the 2700 versus 2650 or 60 level match. But here, for those wondering about who's going to make the playoffs, I think people are going to be really, really interested in seeing how Libyshevsky versus Tang turns out. Libyshevsky is going to have the white pieces in the 15 plus 2 game because Khan had a bigger fan tiebreak this week, or sorry, fan growth this week awesome match starting in a few minutes here by the way the fan vote is today right says balaji that's right that is right yes and also yeah. a shout out to our vega in the chat hello our vega he says hello to james and david all right our vega in the yeah, in right. the running for best fan once again streaming once his games again. um i think i saw him in the lineup for the gnomes this week i don't know if i'm wrong i definitely saw him playing uh so, match starts yeah. in about two or three minutes. Yeah, very soon. Knockouts. Very soon. Um, let me make sure I got everybody followed actually here for a second. And you guys can all do this too if you want to be able to follow the games yourself. We're going to follow the... Um... Go Tang says, for the absurd... Nice. Nice. All right. Just type slash follow and then type in these uh these team names. Mm -hmm. I do the same right now. Got him, got him, got him. So when that comes live, we'll be we'll be right there and uh, we'll be able Perfect. to see them. Oops. Sorry about that. Uh -oh. I went to David. I went to double me again for a second. Double I don't, David. What's what what's up with all the Davids? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Alright, I found you. You looked a little weird. I found you, man. You're good. You're good. Yeah. You're all centered and, and uh cool with your indoor sunglasses again. Right. Yeah, that's right. They're indoor, outdoor, every door. So that's how it is. Sleep, no sleep. 
Yeah, of course we're ready. We're ready. We're ready for let's this KO. Go. Let's go. It's the KO. So, time, who you got for the knockouts? I got Saric. I got Saric. Me too. Hey, you? Me too. Me you too. too. I just think, just think he's about to turn up. Not tournament glasses though. That's right, Balaji. That's the only time. You don't there wear the we glasses go. in the tournaments? Not in the tournament. Nope. Uh, I just don't wear them then. It's the only okay. time I don't wear them. I just don't. I just yeah. never have. It's like a ritual. But I wear them any other time of life. Any other time. No so. way. You don't sleep with glasses on. Always. Sleep. Always. Sleep. <laughs> sleep. Yeah, walking around. No matter. Indoors. <laughs> outdoors. Don't matter. Nice. So here we go. No All right. And the Montreal chess bras. Yep. Uh, Hammer had black against the chess bras in week one, playing a uh, playing a uh, Berlin defense against um, what's his name, Eric Hansen, and uh, uh, yes. he played a brilliant game that week. He did. So Sarge playing a different approach here with d3 instead of one of the open variations where you take on e5. So we'll get sort of like a, a little bit more maneuvering before the fireworks, <laughs> and we got a second Rui. So nice C three Roy. I've never played this honestly. Have you ever? Uh, you you've played everything, David. So yeah. With this nice C three Roy Lopez, what's the intention about this? It feels a little bit more like those Joko pianos where there's no pawn breaks and they're sort of like peace maneuvering for a bit. Okay. Um, you know, the bishop uh, could come to a four, b three, and knight c five could could be played. This could also be looking for a threat for some moment to take on c6 and then capture on oh, e5 so you might nice. you might sort of like force black to play a move like d6 and then once Correct. they've done it play d3 d4 actually once the knight on c6 wow. is pinned that's interesting um, interesting stuff never seen this not never seen it but it's very interesting to me that he plays this instead of the regular you know castle c3 knight d2 rookie one knight f1 knight g3 stuff the yeah. regular roy lopez we all know but knight c3 is very interesting and it's just very good to see this point of view and see what the intention is behind it so hopefully you guys out there are watching and taking notes so you can switch up because we know there's a lot of Roy Lopez. And what time PCL chat. starts? It's on right now, man. You're wa you're watching it as you You're ask that question right now, big fella. What's up, B E K T? This What's up, is man? the PCL. You are watching the Montreal Chess Bros account is Ivan Saric. The uh, Norway Gnomes account is Jan Ludwig Hammer, and Saric just you know after D6 defending E5, he just goes and trades off the bishop pair. That's yeah, another yeah, yeah. thing that Knight C3 does. You know, nice. in a lot of those Jokos, I forgot it for a second, right? But in a lot of those Joko pianos. Once the pawn on e5 or e4 is defended, then the player is always threatening from the knight from c3 or c6 it can go to a4 or a5, and sort of quote unquote trap a bishop, a bishop and just sort of yeah. force that trade. Nice, and that's actually very annoying here because now the dark square diagonal here, of course, this pin on his knight is absolutely phenomenal. So you may be forced to make a committal move like g5, which is yeah. very annoying. And after you know, it, it, where's your king going to go? Are you really going to castle king side? Which you could, but you have to be, uh, you have to do it with caution. Because of the yeah. fact that your king's still in the center of the board, you've opened up that side. I actually like this for for right here. Uh, it's very interesting to see this is played, and uh, let's see what actually what happens next. <laughs> Shout out to Matt. He says he does flex, makes a move, and flexes. That's right. He showers with glasses too. Says they uh, for the absurd. That's right. Absolutely. At what PCO start? This position's no joke. Correct. Welcome to the stream, guys. Hello, Elfins. And it's black to move. Black to move here. Trying to figure out what to do. Honestly, I am not a fan of Black's position here. And well, this Roy Lopez, I have never been in this territory, and it's not good. So I'm like G5. Yeah, G5. G5. G5 is normal. G5 is normal. You kind of sideline that bishop on H4. Um, it can be a little bit tough for it to get out once it gets sent to G3. The good thing for Black here is having a lot of pawns on dark squares when he's missing the dark squared bishop. That mm, right. Normally that would leave weaknesses on the light squares, but right now he's got a light squared bishop that can cover them. Right, it means the bishop has the maximum mobility if he doesn't have many pawns on light squares blocking him, and it means he's keeping the squares controlled. The way that you, well, there's a couple ways to show the power of the bishop pair, but one of the most important ways to do it in a middle game is to get an open diagonal of the dark square color, because the opponent won't be able to block you on it. Right, so what uh, what Hammer wants to do is not allow any big dark square diagonal to be open for this bishop. And right now with G5 and, and E5, he's in good position to do that. Mm, that's um, correct. And actually, he played this very well because after the G5 move, you had to go, I think, 97 in this knight G6 maneuver was necessary, especially if you're going to castle at any time. If you're ever going to castle, especially even maybe even king side, but wherever you're going to put the king, 
I think this 97 Night G6 was very necessary. Knights work best behind the pawns. So mm -hmm. it's very good to have this G5 Night G6 kind of maneuver and do, you know, maybe Queen E7 and maybe aspirations of casting Queen side. I think that's absolutely super risky, but he could do it. He could absolutely do it. And yeah. also maybe even start an attack of his own if he's able. Knight G6, Queen E7, maybe like Rook G8 or something, defending G5 first and pushing H5. Yeah, definitely possible. The big question, I think, at the moment is where they're going to put their kings. I know that there's like an important battle that's going to go around on this e5 square. You know, white's wanting to play d4. Um, black has played bishop d7 and this knight maneuver towards g6 purposely so that white wouldn't have the possibility of bishop takes c6 hanging over him to put more pressure on e5. Because wow. he doesn't want White to be able to crack the e5 square and get the bishop on g3 active that way. Right, right. Yeah, he actually played an interesting move, bishop a4, I guess, just to create a weakness yeah. over here and also make it kind of weird. To be, not his bishop is actually trapped on c4, so b5 yeah. is a legit threat. So maybe you have to go b4. I think that was strong. It's a very here, cool idea from Hammer. Weakness. Yeah. Very cool Broken idea. And actually, I mean, I honestly just would have went queen e2 myself. I wouldn't have played that. And a4, yeah, it makes Ooh. sense. You have to kind of make this committal move so now we know where both kings are going well, most likely most yeah i mean it's not really looking like a castle. queen side castling position yeah. um so yeah, hammer with fine. with bishop a4 i mean hammer was trying to trade light squared bishops right that would break up the bishop pair right mm -hmm. then he could just maneuver very freely so um uh, sarge took some pains to keep his light squared bishop on the board right he didn't play bishop b3 he didn't trade on d7 so he definitely wants to keep both Man, bishops on the board so um whoops sorry that's just me guys no, and that was so strong because i saw him do uh i was like well why didn't he just go queenie two but b5 actually like you said trading the bishops mm -hmm. off and that actually would have won a piece because he didn't have anywhere else to go i think he had bishop d5 no bishop c6 d5 c6 bishop b3 oh, my takes goodness. and then he takes yeah. and the rook's hanging oh yeah. man that was nasty you couldn't even move the queen you can't just man. play queenie two because you want to oh, there's there's some intense stuff hammer i'm telling you hammer comes in with the most creative stuff i've ever seen sometimes all right but then somehow he's just losing still somehow definitely <laughs> black wants to play g4 here keep things closed and maneuver and white's trying to open things up so we see very clearly the different goals of the two players here with this exchange on the H file of blows. Wow. That was beautiful. Shout out to Metal Eagle. Says, hello, James and David. Welcome, Metal Eagle. Good to see you, man. So H5 hitting the Knights. Man, this is wild. So you take on F3, he takes on G6. You take on G2, he takes on F7. You move out the way, he moves out the way. Yeah, White's like, white's like better. They are. All right. I'll just show them what dude. you're thinking. It's black dude here. Just takes and then just step out of the way it's fine yeah if mm -hmm. white had just retreated the knight last move right then black right. could have oh, played h5 or something yeah, right and right. then keep that's things right. more sort of locked up but then he could got he got the f5 square i mean not realistically i guess because he can always bring a bishop back but he could go knight f1 to e3 f5 in yeah position. he'd be pretty far from it all right so yeah. pieces yeah, traded they did go for it wow pieces traded they went for it, guys. So I guess this his knight on G6, game. did it have nowhere good to go? Yeah. So if the knight on G6 doesn't have anywhere, anywhere great to go, plus after H5, white has knight H4 in many cases, right? Yeah. So it's like he didn't want to let that knight get to F5, so he makes the trade now. Has to trade again on G6 to not allow white to come into F7. And uh, Sarge is going to take back on F3 probably, but I think he was looking at queen F3, B5 actually. And... <laughs> And decided to take mm. with the G pawn. Man, that bishop over there is not good. Like, that bishop is scary. He would have to go bishop e6, which is not like, you aren't giving up a pawn, but it's very weird. It is absolutely extremely right. weird. Bishop e6, what are you? Queen like e7, bishop, bishop h3, and you sacked the pawn in a4. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you ever go bishop h4, black has g5. So the position's not that dynamic. Oh, it looks like right. it's opened up somewhat, but it's not necessarily open enough to where you want to be sacking material just yet. Correct. Correct. So yeah, like I guess. So I guess he was afraid of b5. So he plays pawn takes f3, and now black really wants to play g5 himself. I mean, you do not want to let white play f4 and start working this bishop out of g3. Mm -hmm. So he wants to play g5, but there could be something wrong with it. F4. We'll see. I like this f4 move though. What's up, D Price? What's going on? Uh, weird is the word hammer was been using too. Says I'm Agent Smith. Yeah, it's just weird, man. Queen e7. Is where he goes now. Okay, yeah, so now is so strong, man. It's ridiculous sometimes when like you find he's like Bishop A4 was brilliant, and then he's actually keeping the queen 
you know, at bay because this B5 moves so annoying. So you may have to move the rook out of the way. You just got to get rid of this rook on A1. So this now if white like plays F4, problems. maybe he trades and plays D5. Maybe that's the idea of queen E7 is if you play, yep. if you play F4. Actually, he doesn't even need to trade on F4. He can just play D5 right D5 away. Just anyway. like, boom, yeah, hello. That's a scary move. Hello, Hits this bishop. Color. You're doing something. Right. If you take on D5, he takes on F4 with check. Ooh, then yikes. takes here. Yikes. Ivan's like, what do I do? How about King D2? <laughs> maybe Queen. Well, I was going to say maybe Queen E2, but then again, B5, B5 right? Yeah, and B5 wins, actually. All B5 right, the bishop doesn't even have E6 anymore, so he's got to really respect this B5 move. So he plays B4. That makes a lot of sense. That's a good move. So now we get to back the bishop up, stop in B5. We can, you know, put this bishop on a better square because, uh, Man, that, this, everything's tied around his bishop. So now, would this actually be an unusual position where Hammer would want to open the center with d5? In general, Black wants to keep the bishop trapped on g3, create a maneuvering game for his knight, right? So normally, you're thinking Black wants to play moves like g5 or knight h5. But I've got this weird feeling like I don't know where the white king's going. Black could castle on either side. And, well, not, not king side, actually. Black could castle queen side in one move if things are exploding. So could he play d5 here? Mm, that's a good move. D5? Yeah. He's thinking about it, I'm assuming. D5, Bishop maybe, D3. Maybe on D5, just, just Bishop B3, that. and he doesn't get what he really wanted, right? Which was like to get his knight to D5 and attack C3, to get his bishop Correct, looking at F3. Correct, because he didn't have to take it. He plays King F8. King what an interesting move. King All right. G7. All he, right. He knew that's where he wanted to for. castle his king. It was not queenside. Castling was illegal, so he just walks over to the G7 defend those pawns with the king and finally get his rooks coordinated so now i guess question over to mr sarich like how do you get your rooks looking at each other king d2 I think king, d2. king f1 yeah, to g2 king d2 move was uh was very strong because it kind of gets out of the way and then the queens are he plays d4 instead actually which is really interesting we got to see what the uh the plan yeah. is and the follow-ups oh man we, i mean what's the what's the real follow-up here this I'm, is so weird i forgot to follow the other game but i got to check in on that since the playoff oh, yeah. implications minnesota blizzard so this and... Rui Lopez here, um, Black has taken the pawn on a4 very early on. And, uh, yeah, obviously White still has an amazing center. I like Black's C5, C4, though. no. So he's just, he's like, yeah, I don't have any realistic pressure against the d4 pawn. I'm not going to get White to play d5. So I'm just going to plop a knight on d3 as some kind of counterplay. Right. <coughs> yeah, I actually like his. Uh, I like how dynamic the position is actually for for black. I mean, it's, a, it's pretty good. He's also up a pawn. So, like, I mean, yeah. we convert. We start trading pieces. This is out. Actually, I kind of like what, what Tang's doing here. I mean, he's got so much counterplay. Yep. He's knight got that c5 I mean, square for a knight. Knight. Yep. knight. Yep. Knight e5, knight d4, knight c4. But he's okay. We're okay. But I mean, it doesn't care. I don't care if you take on B5. Oh, yeah, actually, the D3 pawn's hanging. So he, I guess he's trying to figure out how to hold everything. So maybe the knight needs to go to C5. Yeah. I mean, that's the best square for the knight, and it defends D3. I mean, it also puts some pressure on E4. Yeah, correct. So it might be right. It might be the right way to go. Looks really nice. They still got a lot of time. I didn't realize, like, it feels like this game has been so full of content, but they actually have only spent a few minutes figuring out these moves. Mm -hmm. and uh, there's still a lot of time left for them to figure out the problems in these positions. Hey, Canty, how you doing? Glad to see you, bro, to comment. Progress. What's up, Incognito Bandito? Welcome to the stream, man. Good to see you. Rook take. Oh, he took on F6 and played Queen F6. Took on C3 and played right. Queen F6, hitting the rook. So by doing it in this order, he doesn't even allow White to play Knight D4 by making the trade himself proactively. Mm. Why wouldn't White have taken with the B pawn? Because that would allow Knight D4. Let, let me just ponder that for a second. Oh, that's it, a good. That's a good note. Is that's it just because note. the a pawn becomes a passer? I guess because maybe the, the rook's rook so ugly over there. Like ugly. it's so uh, inactive in a way. You know, you got to bring it back to a one to bring it back in the game. Maybe a two. I mean, that's miserable. Yeah. Like position's like miserable after that. I'm just not a fan. But you do have knight d four though. But you do you get knight d four, which is kind of like White's proactive plan. And you got to do something proactive here because you're down a yeah. pawn and. You know, black takes queen f6. Honestly, he played queen c1. Yeah, I just see black winning in all lines. I mean, knight c5 is strong, but he does have e5. 
So that's the, okay. uh, he's stopping temporarily. So he's stopping knight c5, knight c5 partly by having the rook on c3 because e5 and, and this stuff. Yeah. Um, e5 is really strong. Okay, that was good. That was good. That was a nice move. He and he's stopping rook c8. And he's yeah, stopping knight, knight c5. That was, that was good. That so was nice. actually, it's pretty good. Actually, he's asking Tang a question, you know, like, like what, what are you going to do? do? <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do now, Tang? What are you going to do? Honestly, like, what do you do? 95? Are you forced to play 95 now? Or do you play rook b8? Like, you need a good plan. And uh, I don't see one right. just yet. Rook b8 kind of does a lot of nothing, right? I mean. Correct. You just kind of, you know, relaxing, trying to see what he does. Rook b8. But what's your follow-up? If you don't yeah. have follow-up, it's not good. So maybe you got to move to queen because you have to get nice c5 in. Mm -hmm. Maybe queen d8. That's such a weird move to make, honestly. But, I mean, it might be necessary. It might be necessary. Yeah. He's in a think tank. Queen to c1. Uh, queen d8 is so weird, but he does have... Yeah, queen d8, knight d4, queen b6, maybe. Hmm. That's a good move, man. I c5, push, pawn takes, rook takes, push. No, it doesn't work. I c5, push, rook, queen d8, takes, knight b3. Time's Maybe ticking. Knight c5, e5, queen d8, pawn takes d6, knight b3. Sorry. Give us to, give us that again. So, knight uh, c5. Yeah. Um, e5, e5, queen d8. Queen and d8. And then after takes on d6, knight b3 to take on d6. <sighs> okay. You got to play rookie one first, or rookie eight's going to take you off of d6, maybe? So let's try Rookie one, queenie one. Oh, and then we can play queen d6 because you know the queen's off of c1. Yep. Queen so d6. the preparation is done. Oh, man. He just played rook, c rook played e7 rookie after two minutes of thinking, but that wasn't yep. a bad idea. Let's see. Knight c5, e5, queen to d8. What might be other concerns The only thing I was thinking position? is if he tries to sack on c5 and try to go for that double pawn thing, but I just don't think it works. It just mm -hmm. doesn't look right. Right. But he could also leave that. the tension somehow, right? Because we're not threatening to take on e5. Right. The knight's kind of dangling well, there on queen c5. H6. Ooh, ouch. I think queen so, h6 might be a dagger. Queen let's h6 look at that. is monstrous. Yeah. yeah. Queen h6, I'm not a fan at all. Ooh. Knight g5, how do you stop it, right? Vicious. Ooh, oh, we man. got an exchange sack from Sarge on the other board. So let's, let's catch up. So rook e7, queen e3, rook a e8. I'm feeling like Tang's actually been a little bit bottled up. So, so Libyshevsky's doing a good job keeping this game interesting but let's i mean he's strong like he's putting some moves on everybody today he's let's, like I, this is my debut and i'm gonna show out let's click over to this other right thing so first thing sarge did in that position we saw is he played b5 kicking that bishop from c6 right taking that pressure off his e pawn now he's got some more space queen b3 knight h5 is played and he just instantly takes it he just snapped it. Hello, boom, that's mine. Boom, boom, castle. Hello, and then castle, queen side. And I love this compensation. My kind of chess here, but you got to be very aggressive from this point out. Anything passive loses. So, you know, we had not maybe loses because of the structural weaknesses for black too, but it's, uh, it's going to be difficult to say the least. Because, I would say there's uh, a very good chance of losing for white if, if he slips up. I agree with you. Like, <laughs> yeah. you play like this, you really have to have to follow up well because... Right. Because yeah, you make one slip and then you're down in exchange, and for and Correct. for what, you know? For what, right? H four is actually a legit thing. Well, not maybe right now, but if that pawn does get rolling, it is a pass pawn. Mm -hmm. So, and the bishop on d seven is currently attacked. So bishop h four is not a thing. Um, but maybe rook g one. I mean, you got to start doing something. I mean, after that, I mean, not rook g one now, but uh, he did take on on an e five with check. Yeah. So I'm loving this. Grab comp. that pawn. Loving this comp. Now he's got this bishop completely open, right? That's the piece that Black could never deal with. And the way he, he got it out was partly this d4 move, partly this exchange sack. And e4, f4, e4, you know, if he can get the f pawn to f4, this can become quite a mobile mass of pawns as well as far as compensation. Yeah, and honestly, I think this is just honestly going to be a crush very soon. There's two minutes for Hammer. And mm -hmm. Hammer has not been good on time. Every time he's gotten in time trouble, it was bad. So yeah. every uh, it's it's pretty rough here. It's ten fifty nine, ten fifty nine to almost under two two minutes here for for hammer. So uh, the follow up here, what do we do? Bishop f four. It's very interesting, but maybe we do bishop, have bishop e six. Maybe bishop so. d four. But bishop that h pawn is just running if we put everybody on the queen nice. side. And he he did go bishop h two. That's a bishop concession. Two. That is a concession. 
Yeah, well, I mean, he didn't want his bishop sort of on this dangling e5 square forever, right? So he had to do something about it. If he goes to d4, he keeps the black king boxed in, but he lets the h-pawn run completely freely. By the way, guys, bishop e6 did not work because of rook e5. Pinning and winning a piece. If bishop takes c4, rook takes e7. That's with check. So that will be over. So now queen to g7. He's actually is threatening, I think, bishop e6 now. Mm -hmm. So what do we do is why he's also, some man, look at this, guy, this, this file. I mean, that's a scary file. But also, why, like, black's king is scary. So if he's not careful, like, this queen being on the file, yeah, it, it's doing some damage. Queen g2 is a, is a, probably a threat. Mm -hmm. But, you know, his, his king is still unsafe. We do need to figure out how to get the queen involved in a way that she's actually really helping. Because right now she's really not. Rook h5. Is I, I was feeling the rook was going to retreat to d1 or d2, and instead... He swung it over to the other side. He's there, so, I mean... Chef f4, rook takes h4, I guess, if queen to g2. That that rook is really oh, dangling there. I guess his idea is, as know. far as an exit strategy, that he could take the pawn on h4 at some point with his rook. I thought that, too. Yeah. And then live, and honestly, Bishop live over there. Bishop a legit threat, too. It's strong. These bishops and, like, this compensation is... You can't... You know, you got to notice this compensation. This is very... Very strong. Oh, the queens come into h6 in the other game. But I guess uh, Tang was ready for it, keeping his queen on f6. He just drops back. And I he's okay. An, I am an, an, an invitational. I am GM uh, invitational, and I got four and a half out of nine. It was, like, just short of a norm. But I did do uh, I remember the game I lost is when I always remember this queen h6 now because I lost the game like that. and missed knight g5, and I was like, Okay, that's it. That's over. You're like queen h6. Oh. That looks kind of scary. I guess your queen's near my king. I I'm can't fine. chase her away. You know, yeah, but I'm okay. I, let's see what you I got. Let's see the plan. And then knight g5. You're like, oh well, like, yeah, oh, okay. Snap. You know what? <laughs> hey, let's just start a new one. Let's reset it up. Yeah. All reset. right. So with this, I mean, black might want would think the natural move would be queen f6. So what's wrong with queen f6? Right? He's thinking. Hmm, that is but a move. That's let's just really let's just too. look at it real quick. Queen f6 trades. That's pretty good. And then white's like e4. black's in the driver's seat, hidden e4. How do you even defend it? You don't. Like e4 that's out. Hanging. You can't defend that. Mm -hmm. Actually, knight d2. He can slightly. Knight d2. Yeah. And h4 though. H4 then take on e4. Yeah. So that's basically not good. So if black plays queen f6, I don't think that there's any real problem there for Tang. I think he could play queen f6 if he wants to. Maybe Libeshevsky yes, goes back to h6. Repeat, maybe. Correct, right. The makes repeat, a draw. Like he did last time, always repeat first. So. But who wants to play bullet with Andrew Tang? I mean, other than for fun. But, I mean, when you're trying to win, you don't really want to play bullet That's with Andrew Tang. With Andrew Tang, right. And he's actually giving him a run for his money here. Look, at he's down on time. That's very, very rare to see Tang mm -hmm. being down so much on time. And he does go back for the repeat here. He always repeat first. Let's see if they'll go for a draw. Queen h6, you have to stop yeah. knight to g5. That's so annoying. We've seen so Libeshevsky do this once before, cool. but then not make the draw, right? That's so right. This... He's like, ah, not today. Sorry. Tricked you. But just queen putting G7, that queen pressure on. Knight e5. Maybe you just have to go for knight e5 instead of putting a queen back on f6 because you don't want to take the perpetual. Hello. And again, you know, Hello. We got we got a mating combination here. Sarich oh ringing the bell. Look at him. He just made it, him, big fella. Whoa. Yep. He did it. He found it. Let me see this mate. That was beautiful. How wow, so happen? on queen g2, bishop, bishop f4, bishop f4 going after h6, black figured, like, I can't defend it, I'll just go for this counterplay, right? Queen g2, queen f3, everybody's bishop hanging. G8. Oh, but I don't think goodness. he saw bishop g8. Wow, that's I don't a, think he saw that that's one. That's a big boy move, guys. Oof. Did you do your puzzle rest today? Okay, bishop g8, ouch. Yeah. The if he doesn't take it, the white queen still gets access to f7, f7 basically, yeah. right? So it just oh man, that's beautiful. Would have been the same. That's a beautiful mating net. Beautiful. Wow, mating bishop g8. Boom. We'll leave you with that. We'll leave Ooh. you with that. Thank you, Yvonne. Very nice. Fulfilling the chess bras promise, starting to rack up the points. That's at least two more that's points nice. for the chess bras, at least yeah, they, for sure. You I know, mean, so for sure, right? They Box can they can chalk that up. Yeah, already two points. Yeah, man. They're was, moving into excellent. the record, the record for most points. Back to our, back to our playoff contenders, Minnesota and Khan, scrambling like here. Do you see him doing this? What is that even about? What, what, so what happened? H8. So he played queen h8. He played queen h8 instead of queen g7 because he didn't want the draw. Are you kidding me, Tang? <laughs> queen h8, bro. Oh. So hey, far away from the draw here. Yeah. The guy was never going to give you the draw anyway, man. Libyshevsky's got some, like, psychological torture going on. 
for real. He really is. He really is. Even though he's uh, he's down this pawn, he's absolutely making this very hard for Tang here. And even you even have aspirations of knight f5 in some cases right now with uh, this knight to d4 move on the board. That's pretty strong. Knight f5 could be a thing if he takes on f5, knight takes. And then well, you always could block on g6 with the knight. So maybe that's not a real threat. But your knight is hanging on, on d4 if my knight moves on e5. So it's, I think it's I think it weird. could still happen. He's got to keep his eye on knight f5 because, yeah. you know, if white just plays knight f5 and then takes on d6, like black could be so uncoordinated, you know, with the Correct. queen trapped on h8 and stuff that even if you don't mate him with the doubled rooks on the c file with the d pawn coming down, but I guess that's out now because he didn't play knight f5. Yeah, he just played knight f1, but he's still. But I could see that being annoying, especially like you get the guy down to one minute and then you play a move like knight, knight f5. f5, and they're like, oh, I gotta think, and then they got ten seconds up. Yeah, I found that like when you're low on time, some of the hardest positions to play are just positions that are awkward. You know, not necessarily like the guys coming with some direct mating threat. You know, you just sort of like find the tactics that defend your king. But if your pieces are awkward and they've got multiple different angles that they're coming at you with, that's where I found, okay, he could take d6, but he'd lose e4. So we got a trade Correct. on offer here. Right. Offering a trade. Kind of insisting on the trade, too, since d4 and e4 are both hanging here. And honestly, taking on d6, you can't take on e4. Because uh, d7 is hanging. All right, knight b5, Pawn a b5, queen, queen d6, d6 and yeah, if I'm, rookie 4, queen d7. Uh-oh. Well, if you can get D6 for free, Tang you got to be pretty happy, man. Tang is like, hey, man. Now uh, ever, <laughs> I hey, regret. Man, let's, let's draw. I you regret. Know, uh, 97 draw. You want to draw? I regret draw thinking draw? for over a minute and then playing Queen H8 instead of Queen G7 in one second. <laughs> oh, you want to draw, man? Hey, man. Um, Let's go to art school and just do this. Let's draw some stuff today. 97. He played 97 and offered a draw. And you know that Fabian is not going to take this. Especially being up three minutes on time. Yeah. No, he's got a huge advantage here. And, I mean, he's got to be feeling good, right? I mean, he took care of Hammer in a two-game match. He's not yeah. going to be afraid of Tang now. I mean, I know yeah, Correct. I know a lot of people are going to have some respect, some fear for Andrew Tang when they're playing him online. But basically, chess players, if they've just won a game, they all feel like they're the best ever, right? What? Yeah. He, they took a draw. Is they it? took a draw. Unbelievable. That's misery. Misery. Unbelievable. This is not real. This is I, not what we came to see today. No, this is, this is not what we came to what see. Is, what is wrong, Fabian? I don't even know. What is draw. wrong, man? Okay, I was going to say, I mean, maybe it doesn't apply to Fabian. But basically, in my experience, almost any chess player, if they win a game, the next moment they think, like, there's a chance I'm as good as Kasparov. Yeah, right? They're like, right. I might be, until I'm proven wrong by my next loss, but, like, right. basically, Especially right now I'm a genius, yeah. right? Yeah, right now I'm a genius. Street, you know? I won a game. No one can stop me. What? What? What does he think could stop him here? Knight takes I have b5. No idea, bro. Knight takes b5. Take on d6. I don't know. I don't know. And it, it, of course, it always says something psychologically too when your opponent offers a draw and uh, and you up a pawn. You know, like yeah. Okay, honestly, I'm going to keep it pushing and push a few more moves and see what happens. I think White's just better. Let me actually what, turn yeah, on. The lines here. Knight B5, so it's funny. It actually just says, yeah, that line. It's actually equal, 100% equal uh, due to Stockfish. Knight takes B5, take on um, A takes B5, and take on D6, and it was equal. But I mean, psychologically and human, human, human equal? evaluation, White's like better. Five minutes against one, and like the D pawns a passer. Yeah, of course. Come Not on. Even going to the bullet round, though. Here we go. Minnesota Blizzard and can Blitzstream. They are in the bullet round right now. So we are in the realm. We are over here where the here glaciers we go. are. The penguins stay over here with with uh, penguin GM Andrew Tang. Yeah. See what happens, guys. It's getting strong. It's getting strong. Well, we have a Samish King's Indian defense. I love the Samish. So I mean, I love playing against it. It's black. So this E six. This E six looks a little bit weird. So correct. It's I don't know. I don't know what that's giving about. me a little it's bit of that bullet. bullet feel where you don't necessarily play real moves. <laughs> Tang, yeah, that's right. Tang about to crush him though. I think Tang about to go F four. Bishop h3, castle f5. Good game. It certainly looks good for Tang. I mean, look at all that space. That knight on h7 is just, I don't know what oh, he's man. doing. He in some trouble. He in some trouble. I mean, maybe, maybe a lot of times here. Maybe knight f4. A knight of, yeah, knight f4 is a Maybe knight f4 because Black's gonna play f5 the only thing I can imagine Black doing here is trying to dig out with his f-pawn, right? Because he's got all these trap pieces. 
Yeah. So like if I play knight f4, does that just shut him down forever? Why is Tang thinking for 40 seconds in a bullet game? That's in hilarious. Game. That's it's hilarious. Like four, right? Come on. But you know, he got time. He's like, you know what? I'm Tang. He's like, I, I can, can play like, this whole game on the one second increment. So, you know, I'll right. spend my minute right, right now. Oh, man. He found his plan, though. He found his plan. Knight f1. Now we bring the knight over to d3 and c5. Yeah, now this is just locked up. I guess he just take another draw here. Is this what we doing? What do you even do to break through? I guess knight f knight at, knight c5, but he goes c6. Yeah, White can always play a4 eventually. There's there's and plenty of things through. Tang can yeah, do. Let's play. It's not gonna break be gonna not gonna be locked forever. Right. So he threatens to take on d7 and win the b5 pawn. That gets Black to play c6, which weakens him further. Right. Now Tang can play a. I don't know why knight b7, but he can play a4 whenever he wants, and that it's he's not opening the bishop on d7 with it. That's now, correct. So. He did snap that off. Takes takes d4 is a move, but not really. Got to get the king safe. That's correct. Maybe take on f5. <laughs> did that uh -oh, pointless knight just go to f8? Doesn't he know it doesn't matter if he's on f8 or h7? Right. It doesn't matter. Same either it's way. Not a move. What is this rook b1? That's not a move. Rook b3. Is that what that's about? I guess so. Because other looking than that, to like, trade what is that, that out. About? You don't have any intention besides rook b3. Yeah. Okay. That's exactly what that is. Snap, snap. Now, how do we do a4? Like you said, he did play it. A4, snap, mm -hmm. rook a3. Absolutely. Now we take some stuff. Queen, nope. Take some stuff. Yeah, he's the only one pushing for a win here. Is, Black's got some pieces white. that can't move. Only Black's one, got yeah. a few and pieces remember, that can't yeah, move. It's always about uh, who has that pawn break. Whoever has that, you know, or controls them is usually uh, the one who has to play. And this b5 pawn break is huge. Queen a2. Yeah, he's, he's on the driver's seat. He's yep. in the driver's seat. He's in his realm. He's getting close. Yep. He's getting close to time Inching control. his way up. Queen a2, queen a3. Knight a2, defend b4 so I can play rook a7. Put the rook on a7 at some point. Rook a6, what does that do? I'm it's not the scenic, sure. the scenic route. Just checking out a6 before he Just goes to a7. Out, you know, right, check it out. Rook a8 on the back right. Oh, uh -oh. that's a piece. Oh. He has dropped a piece. That's over. You yeah. have lost. You have lost. That's what and you get for taking that draw offer, man. You deserved yikes. it at that point. King Come on. Man. Got him. He got him. Come on. You can't take that draw off. Seven seconds on the clock. That should be out. That should be out. Yeah. That knight that still was on H7 still looking for anywhere to go. I know. Trade when you're up, not when you're down. And Tang should pull this one out quite soon. Knight to D4. Get some pieces mm -hmm. off the board. Take on E5. Whoa. He just took on E5. What a move. That is not a move. Actually, <laughs> what takes. a move! That's not a move. I mean, he's just like hoping for some kind of perpetual at the last one. moment oh, here. That's beautiful. That was beautiful. That's kind of evil. That's kind of evil disgusting. to do that to him. I mean, why you have to do that? This is on this queen is a one. Okay. You didn't even need to. You're it's up like a piece. Man. Okay, you but like he that, did man. it. So that's um uh, that's Blizzard, uh moving past Norway, in the standings, right? Because that's at least two points for Tang as well. That's correct. And Hammer and lost Norway to Sarich. Yeah. So Norway is basically they're they're fourth, right? That's they're, yeah, they're out of that's it. That's it. Their last place in Division D. We don't know yet whether it'll be the Blizzard or Khan in um in third place. But in second or third place, we don't know which way that's going to go. But we do know first and fourth place. We do know it's the Chess Bros at the top and the Gnomes at the bottom. Yeah, that is right. As we wait for the next match, let me actually yeah. click on that. And Fabian being a uh, gentleman here, you're welcome. Congrats, he says to Tang. But uh, maybe Tang saying thank you for accepting my draw offer, you know? He's like, maybe that's what he's <laughs> really you. saying thank you for. He's like, All right. I was about to lose Thanks, that bro. game. I randomly offered a draw. Right. That was crazy. Hi, Adi Buzz. How are you? Welcome to the stream. All right, so um, there's one more round to this uh, knockout. One more round, 15-minute game with two-second increment for uh, Sarich and Tang to fight over first place in this knockout. Some bragging rights. That's right, some great chess here. When is actually does it start? It should be starting soon. Yeah, any moment. They give them maybe like, you know, 30 seconds to a minute between rounds usually. Yeah. But uh, I know Tang loves to get that chance to play against 2,700 players in, like, online chess yeah. in his arena, right? Yeah. Like, that's that's always nice, you oh, know, man. to play especially somebody get who— get him in a bullet round, too, where he's, like— yeah. you know, Especially when he's streaming, he's like, hey, mom, yeah, and then making moves. Yeah, uh, yeah, can I have that? Yeah, making moves on the board, talking, and still, like, you know, can do everything. The multitasking monster is ridiculous. He can have a full conversation and still play the bullet game and, like, win every single time. It's ridiculous. 
unreal. Yeah. Well, that is unreal because nobody wins every single time. That's true. That's true. <laughs> That's absolutely true. Right. Even even Magnus has lost the bullet game. <laughs> even yeah. Magnus. Even the man. Even yeah. the man. So it's so, about 10 seconds out. Yeah. 10 or 20 seconds out. Should Let's see. How badly does Minnesota need that one more point? Let me let me think. Let's like just quick over to the standings for one second just so I can see. Um, so basically the blitz stream is going to be at 8. Minnesota is going to be at 6. So one more point if they win this championship game against him makes it seven to eight. It only really matters if the blizzard somehow draw their team match against chess bra. Mm. Otherwise, otherwise, you know, the situation remains the same that the blizzard pretty much need to win their fan club match against the chess bras. If they want to move into a uh, second place ahead of the blitz stream. Uh, yeah, pretty much. So They have to win. They have to. So, and here we yeah, are into the games actually. They that. just started. So yeah. let's see what's going on. Kind of a nightmare day for, for my friend Jan Ludwig. Um he's playing black here against uh Libyshevsky, who who already beat him one and a half to one half during their live club match between their fan clubs. And uh, you know, he might be quoting his uh his partner uh Magnus Carlson, right? Who used to second four and you know, go to school mm-hmm. with as well. But uh, he might be quoting him at the recent tournament where he said, I'm just ready for this to be over. The end <laughs> cannot come soon enough. I've got no more ambition. Any, right. I don't want to play anymore. Got no more ambition for this game. Just want the match to be to over. To be over. Right. Yeah. Whereas uh, Lubezhevsky should be feeling okay about himself and hopefully uh, play a good game. So we actually have, I mean, Roy Lopez goes so many ways. There's so many different lines and stuff. Like, yeah, I've never even seen this. Bishop takes c6 and then knight d2. I mean, it, it just literally put him in the think tank. Like, literally, you start thinking immediately after knight to d2. Yeah, I've never seen it, right? And it's like, what is this about? Never seen it. Not not Kings sure what Bishop the plan is. Takes, takes knight d2. So it's, uh, it's different. Bishop to different. e6. All right. So and b3, put the knight on c4, I'm assuming. And bishop b2. I mean, what, a, what is this? I've never seen this kind it of rule. pressures the e5 pawn. Black's going to have to play like f6, usually knight d7 and f6. That's what I would have played. Knight d7, f6, just to block yeah. that bishop to make him like weaker. And then there's a bunch of strong. different options for how white can go from there. Let's click over to uh, Sarich against Tang, the championship game here. Another yeah. Rui Lopez. So we're just getting like a flood of Rui Lopez's today. Right. So if you are a Roy player, make sure you guys are watching because uh, you're getting some fun today. You're learning a lot of Roy. Yeah. So um, I'm a little surprised to see this Bishop D7, Queen C8 from Tang because in my experience, that's usually sort of like a bullet kind of thing where people just like sack on H3. Yeah, actually, uh, the bishop. does that quite often. Naka does the same thing. Queen C8, right. Bishop D7. Bishop and it can just be very tricky to play that position under um time pressure for the person who gets sacked on even though it's not like actually decisive or anything um but here you're playing a 15 minute game right against somebody who's been 2700 fide this year and i just don't think that's that's a realistic idea so i wonder what queen c8 is about Mm -hmm. that's great that's actually a great observation maybe he's not going for that maybe he might be trying to psych him out and actually play queen b7 b4 ideas or uh, even h6 f5 in some in some cases here but you do have to reveal your hand very soon maybe even taking knight before and c5 because the queen helps is like a rook on c8 instead of uh, the rook actually being on c8 multi-purpose move here but he does have to come up with something clever here his bishop takes h3 is just not a move so he did take on d4 and let's see what uh hmm. yvonne does yeah, so I'm still waiting to see what it is. I wonder if maybe the queen could like hang out on b7 to sort of connect the rooks and defend that a6 square against white's rook and maybe sort of like have that pressure against e4 that normally you would see like a white bishop on b7 and a, uh, sorry, a black bishop on b7 and queen on d7. And here you could have it with like the queen on b7, bishop on d7 maybe. Mm. He actually played on, took on b5, which is okay. very interesting here. So we're going to see a trade of rooks, I'm assuming, on a8. And then uh, queen's on a8. So after queen takes a8, now you got to take your pawn back. And now it's just a little bit different here. Yeah. And yeah, I'm not sure how we feel about this. All Mike's right. center to attack, though. That's about it. 
Yeah. So the big move for White is to play G4 at some point, I think. Yep, I was assuming that because the knight is uh, scary looking. Yeah, it's stopping H5. White from playing knight to G3, right? And if you kick it back to F6, basically you've got all this space. You're trying to make those pieces like step on each other, right? The knight on F6 blocks the bishop on G7. So short on spaces. It, can, it doesn't have a square to go to after F6 either. That'll be the big move at some point. It'll take pressure off of D4. It'll make E4, E5 more of a thing um that black has to watch out for um so he just he just did it there was nothing else to do first i guess so yeah gets that space to g3. brings the knight up the white bishops are pretty well placed here i think i don't know that they need much adjusting i mean bishop b3 could be played maybe in some cases but basically white's pretty happy with the tucked bishops like the guy on c1 there's no there's no use in putting him oh, on, he on just d2 or e3 g4 Whoa, knight okay. takes g4. He just that's one of those water bottle flip. Boom, you feel the energy, you flew out your chair. Oh, oh my goodness, he just sacked on g4 because it's that pressure on d4. d4. He said, Yeah, that's oh. me. Uh -huh. Let's go. I am from the blizzard land where the penguins are. That's oh, exactly man. what he just did. Knight takes g4, big fella. That's a big boy move, guys. I hope so, your tactics are correct. So today. that's oh, gonna be that that's move. gonna be awkward for white with d4 hanging. He just sacked a full piece. Two pawns for it. Now, I did get two pawns. I got a little bit of compensation, and I'm going for a third when knight takes d4. So what if about bishop to e3? That's exactly what he played. Now what's the mm -hmm. follow-up move? Because we need to have a follow-up. We just sacked a piece on this 2700 monster beast here. So you need mm -hmm. to make sure you are accurate. Well, he what could take on f3 move? and then take on d4, on get d4. a third pawn for the piece. Get a third you know? pawn. Just, yeah, three pawns for the piece. So just maybe keep he it, might go for that, Just guys. keep it clear and positional, right? Knight takes d4 at the end. You're going to trade off one of the bishops in white's bishop pair. So you're going to end up with three pawns against a knight, and the game's just going to go on. It's going to be pretty close to, to equal. So it's very viable for black to go for that. Strong stuff here, folks. He took on G4. Didn't even think twice about it. I mean, there's now some... He's, now he's thinking. There's some riskier stuff with, like, Queen A2, maybe. Um, Queen A2. You know, Bishop B3. He's got Bishop takes F3. Bishop A2. Bishop D1 or D1. That's no good for black. Um, Queen A2, Bishop B3, Queen B2. Bishop takes F7 is probably bad for black as well. Oh, yeah, he does have so, my in that line. Oh, the queen shit, A2 just... stuff is probably not, yeah, probably not yeah. good here. Man, and you really don't want to take on F3, but you might have to. F5 was, like, interesting, but that's just not a move. I mean, F5 looks so good, but it really is not. I just, I just think it's wrong. F5, F5. You, well, let's have a look at it. I mean, there's only so yeah. many things we could do, so let's try something. F5 is F5. like, you want him to take, because if then you might be able to do right. knight to We four. take, we play knight d4. Bishop takes. Bishop takes. Bishop but takes f3. Gotta, the the rook uh, is hanging on e8. Rook e8, check, and we lose. And okay, so hang on. Right. So I got to play rook e1, Ooh. queen yeah. e1. And now I can take on F3, but then Queen E6 check is coming. So I don't think Yeah, it doesn't work. I don't think I'm gonna like this at the end, you know. King H eight, maybe even pawn F six from White. Just saying yeah. like you're done. <laughs> stop it. You know, stop the nonsense. Not today. Yeah. So Queen to D eight is actually uh. what he played here. I actually realized I was like, I probably would do something similar. Queen D eight was a candidate move. Just, just to go over to F six to hit the knight and keep some pressure going. But honestly, I mean, I am down a, 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 not down a piece, but in a way down a piece. I do have two pawns for it. I just got to be accurate. So let's yeah. see what he does. Let's People are asking does. about the poll to pick between third place teams, right? Which, um, you know, the Blizzard here are one team that could end up in third, possibly, right? If they don't win their match against Chess Bra, then they'll end up behind Khan in third place. The poll for third place teams will be on Twitch. That's the question. Everyone's expecting Twitter. We've had polls on Twitter before, like what's the best game? What's the best move? That sort of stuff. Today, it will actually be on Twitch. That is not a mistyping or mistake. Right. It will actually be on Twitch. It will be on the Pro Chess League channel. So, Cinco Field Cup, which I think some other people were asking about, Cinco Field Cup will be coming on on the main chess channel. Over on the Pro Chess League channel, you can go place a vote for your favorite third place team that you would like to see play in the playoffs tomorrow. Okay, because we're going to be back tomorrow with two Pro Chess League playoff matches already. So, if you've been missing those four versus four GM level flavor of Pro Chess League, that's coming back tomorrow. So, you don't have long to wait. Yes, sir. It's going to be very, very fun. And as we see in this game, 
Montreal Chess Bras, uh, Yvonne has played Knight F1, yeah. followed by Knight H2, I'm assuming. Coming to, to H2, to, for yeah, sure. And honestly, I think at that point, it's like Andrew's going to realize, honestly, that this just didn't work out. This just didn't work out. He I mean, may regret H2, He may regret not taking the pawn on D4 when he spent a minute and a half on Queen D8. I mean, I could be wrong. You know, Maybe he'll come up with something here, but it felt like taking on F3 and taking on D4 was playable you know it was it was like an option if things go badly then you have to come back and say well was that option maybe my best option mm -hmm. yeah it was, that was very very gutsy there just sacking a piece like that how's so our other go game going see what, uh, yeah see what they're doing over here we got a queen trade offer coming from jan ludwig so white put pressure on e5 and d6 with a knight on c4 and jan ludwig gave up his bishop pair at some point on c4 just to relieve some of that pressure He's also got a situation where if white ever plays f4, he can trade off all the minor pieces and take it straight to like a pure rook heavy piece endgame. Um, I feel like Jan Ludwig is probably defending this pretty well, and the position's still pretty pretty balanced. Um, mm -hmm. This rook coming to e1 from white and not the other rook tells me that white is still planning to play f4 no matter what. Otherwise, he wouldn't have left this rook trapped on f1. So he's planning to play f4 no matter what, and we're so probably going to see then. we're probably going to see one of these like heavy piece end games. White's going to have maybe a little pressure on the f file where he could double rooks. He's got the space to play rook f5, and Black will either just hunker down or show me some kind of counterplay that I haven't seen before. Maybe maybe a plan with b5 or something because Black's going to want an open file for one of their rooks to to do something. Yeah, and that's, and I'm not a big fan up. of trading queens when I'm like trying to attack people. So queen mm -hmm. g4 or mm -hmm. h4, I'm probably g4 honestly. Yeah. But maybe he has h5, but then that does weaken some squares. But yeah. queen h4 and g4 are possibilities just to still get f4 in, like you said, and uh, maybe you know try to create something that can happen. Even something like queen h4, king h1, and rook g1, g4 anyway. Just I would to play. I would g4. definitely expect queen g4. Um, maybe even queen f5 just because the light squares are kind of like weak for for black in this game so it makes sense to keep your queen sort of in touch with those yeah um okay he just makes the trade so i guess he's going to a rook end game where he's got a tiny advantage but i would expect that hammer knows how to handle that that, that it's not going to be yeah. enough to threaten to beat him yeah, correct. Not not here. Not here anymore. It's going to take probably a blunder by someone to lose this game. Honestly, by both sides. And I think okay. Black's actually slightly better now at this point. Just because he got rid of the queens off the board. His knight oh. lane three is not doing anything. Of course, this is Fabian's plan. He wants to play g3 before he plays f4. He doesn't mm -hmm. want to trade all the minor pieces. So his plan is still that, you know, maybe Black's bishop's a little bit worse than his. He wants to play f4 with a few more pieces on the board. Take back with the g pawn instead of a piece. And then he could maybe put some pressure on the G file, right? Because G7 is kind of backward with the H and F pawns both moved. Correct. Past he may have him. to go G5. It's interesting. Sometimes Fabian plays so ambitiously, right? Like he plays these kind of like really strong moves, but then he like agrees to a draw just when I think he's like killing his opponent. I'm like, yeah. wow, this is yeah. really impressive. What a great game. And then he offers a draw. So we'll see oh, which man. way that goes. Because like here it's like G3 to me is saying, hey, I don't want the high chance of a draw with F4. With f4, right. he could press very safely, but there'd be a, a good chance of a draw. But if he plays the more aggressive way, then gets a winning position, offers a draw, then you have to ask why he doesn't just play f4. Correct. Yeah, that's true. Because actually, after taking a trading on f4 does trade everything off. It becomes a straight up draw there. And after g3 and f4, uh, with the knight coming to f2 in some cases, the knight does have to get back in the game. But f4 is an aggressive move. I also yeah. like the follow up with uh, uh, Jan here with b5. Yeah, b5. Very nice. You got to do something for pawns. one of your rooks, right? You yeah. got to do something for one of your rooks. It's more about the rooks than the pawn structure. It's that piece activity, right? Right? Because if your rooks are all bottled up and white has a plan of opening the G file or the F file and then doubling their rooks against a target, like you need somewhere for your pieces. That's why that's why white trades on B5 and sort of undoubles the black pawns for him there because at least black doesn't yet have a file. Yeah. That's right? Correct. So it's still some work for black to get their rooks involved in things your yeah, pieces need files and open diagonals and lines and he does get f4 in and now c5 to follow yeah i think this is probably going to be equal to a draw okay 
Well, let's pop over to the other game. Let's see some more of Sarich since it's Whoa. like a rare treat. So after knight f1 was played, threatening knight h2, Tang said, okay, this is my last chance to get this pawn on d4. So he trades on d4 once, trades on f3, and gets this position. Pretty similar to what he could have done if he'd gone for it one move ago, I guess, with his queen on a8. Could have been mm -hmm. pretty similar. So I guess it's, I guess he didn't miss that chance to relieve he the tension and get the third pawn. I, I wouldn't so, have played queen f6. I know huh, that. What about the queen trade? Okay, so I let's look at this position played... at king edge what? one before he does it. Get out of here. Queen f6 out of well, all yeah. the moves. Well, let's ask what's going on here. White's got a knight against three pawns. There's also opposite colored bishops on the board. How would you try to win this position if you were white? Like, what's the main plan to win this position as white? That's a great question, actually. Excellent question. What type of what type of situation could lead to a white win? The answer is an attack against Black's king. You've got two yes. factors that say that, right? You've got the fact that a knight is worse in an end game and better in a middle game. So that says Correct. use the extra piece to attack. You've got the fact that opposite colored bishops favor the attacker because you can attack against light squares and black has a dark squared bishop that's not going to stop your bishop and knight from going after right. f7 or g6 or h7. So the real danger to, to white here, or the real danger to black here is to get attacked. So queen f6 is actually very clear good move for black. If mm. white doesn't trade queens, black gets the f2 pawn. If white does trade queens, now Tang has three pawns against a knight in an endgame. Three pawns are relatively, pawns are worth more in the endgame than in the middle game, and the knight's worth less. So he's effectively one material by trading queens off the board in a sense. Yeah, and that's actually and, uh, that's a very great observation, actually. I mean, and the opposite colored bishops are also going to favor a draw in the end game versus a win in the middle game. So I think that <clears throat> it's a very good decision from Tang, and he's not in like huge danger of 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 losing this way, or at least he's played it the best he could. He's done the yeah, most he could, I think, out of the position. Correct, and, and yeah. of course, now I think it B four might be forced here, unless you maybe go for rook a three just to get another pawn off. Yeah, the board. you'd want to play rook a three. Or maybe even c4. Now, c4 is going to make that pawn very weak. So maybe definitely not c4. Got to keep the pawn structure very strong. It's either rook a3 or b4. Yeah, I mean, c4 would require quite a calculation. It's it's possible, but I'm feeling it's rook possible. a3. Just to get some counterplay. Hold I'm feeling rook, rook a3 b1. is what I would want to do. <clears throat> maybe like rook a3, rook b1, then c4 takes takes. Exactly. Rook then a, you're in a better oh, version of it. For it. He did he go for, for right C3. Away. Okay. I mean, C4 immediately, yeah. Immediately. All right, we'll see. Another pawn off the board. That makes sense. You kind of hopefully can keep this pawn, this C pawn, though. All right, we finally right. got some biceps in the chat. I would think, like, the chess bras would be uh, would be celebrating, like, a lot more than that, right? Because they're right. not just or making the, the playoffs, but they're, like, they're like the best team in the summer series. All, all summer, they've had the best performance of any team. You'd think they'd just be, like, celebrating nonstop. That's right. For the boys they're going at it b4 man i mean either he is like genius or not like there is no in between after this b4 move no in between but uh i guess b5 well is hanging so yeah maybe rook a4 but then rook b1 maybe it is genius because how do you defend b5 Yeah. Just counterplay though. After rook a two, you hit the knight. Then you can play c three and maybe, then c two and maybe, bishop. Maybe c three right away. Maybe c three right away is the way to go. That's then if bishop takes because if bishop takes b five, then you always have rook b seven. Rook b seven, yeah. Right, and collect that. So if you play, mm -hmm. if you play rook a four, white's going to play rook b one. If you play c three, oh, they played rook a four, rook b one. If you played c three exactly first, I mean. then white would have probably played rook c one first, right? And then. Yeah. You can look at you know rook a4 and uh, calculate from there. There it is. You know. did hit the knight. Get it's that complex. tempo. And you got to follow it with c3. There's really nothing else to do. I mean, you could go rook b2, try to trade the rooks off. I just don't think that's maybe that smart. I mean, if you trade the rooks off too, now it might be actually losing. But um, yeah, you, what, do you, what happens on c3? I have I to wonder c3, what would have happened on knight c1 as well. There's... Ooh, I mean, nice it's a C1. super complicated position. I'm surprised. Nice C1 was nice. I'm surprised Sarich hasn't felt the need to invest a little bit more time on these moves. I mean, he hasn't spent more than a couple seconds on like anything here. And <laughs> 10:56. Look at it. He eight know. minutes. 
Yeah. He did the same the last game too. Like I mean, he's he got 11 like minutes. It's so complicated. Is there not? Is there nothing that's even like worrying oh him here? Goodness. Is there nothing to double check? He's, or, been playing, he's been playing like a beast. I or mean, can absolutely. he calculate a 10 move variation and double check it in two seconds? In two seconds, <laughs> right. You know? It's like, yeah, I calculated it during the first second, then I double checked it in the second, second second. What do you I'm want done. from me, man? Like, come on, man. It's just simple. Stop asking me questions. Oh, sorry, sir. So, C3. Bishop takes B5. C2, Rook C1. And you can't get the bishop, honestly, on a good diagonal to be able to take. to be Like, Bishop G5 runs in F4. Then you have bishop b2 takes on c2. That's it. C2 does not work. Maybe rook b2 is a is a uh no, but then he can go bishop d3. Honestly, yeah. this is not looking the best. This is not looking the best. If we can get our king around, if we can snag one more pawn for white, for black, I mean we, we will be fine. And Sarge is like, of course, James. I looked at all of this three seconds yep. ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll be fine. Of course it's not looking the best. Oh man, rook b2, snap on b4. So we might be okay here. We might be, I mean, you have to take on B4. You don't yeah. have Yeah, I mean, he lost a pawn, so he's only got two pawns against the knight, but he eliminated the sort of one of white's pawns, a passer over on the queen side. So he may still be able to, to play for a draw here, but uh, it's still a tough still a tough defense. Very tough defense. And also, they're going to play this one all the way out. Also, tanks down so much time that I think just the time factor and all, even him being, you know, 3,200 in bullet, is still not going to be enough. I mean, especially when you have to play, you know, uh, 10, 11 more minutes for, for, uh, Yvonne here. Like this is, this is tough. And we're down. If we were up, up material, then it's like, okay, that's fine. We can play this out. But being down material is the hardest actually to be here and figure this stuff out. Ooh, our other games looking like hammer has been playing some classy stuff. So some stuff to learn from this game. I'm going to click back a little bit so we can see how it happened ever since he played C5, he kept his pawn on E5. So you rather have like a theoretically weak isolated e5 pawn that white doesn't have any way to attack than have some pressure from white coming down the g or the f file. Mm -hmm. And then with that, he plays for c4, and yeah. suddenly white's going to have a weakness on d3 or c2. So there's a whole yeah. plan that's evolved for hammer, and uh, his rooks are about to get involved too. I like what he's doing. I actually really like what hammer's doing in this game. Yeah. And it's just classy. All right, so he brought the bishop back, threatening knight c5. Bishop e3 defends against that threat. If he plays bishop c5, the bishop will have to retreat to, like, d2 or something. Then he could trade on g1 and get the tempo for knight c5, I'm about maybe? to say, yeah, I honestly think bishop c5 know. was strong. I was like, that's the first thing I thought. Just to get rid of the dark square bishop, control the dark square, so right. d3, hit the rook on b3. Like, well, I guess maybe king f3 strong. might be a move. King Maybe king f3 snap. is a move, right? Because I think the other variations are pretty clear. Like the knight comes to c5, you basically just lose. Um, and mm. if the bishop retreats to avoid that, then you get this tempo taking that stupid looking knight on g1. But whatever, you get the pawn on d3 like you wanted. And, you know, black just rolls with his extra pawn on the queen side. So bishop c5, bishop c5 I guess e2. king f2 would be... The idea. Yeah, really not much. 94 but moves then, the down. No, but I think then, he might be losing. Rook check, king yeah, e2. Rook check, king e2, yep. Snap, and then knight Snap. d4. Knight d4. Now you're threatening rook, rook f1, somewhere. right? So rook b1. Yep. Or maybe, maybe rook, rook f1 one. first. Rook oh, f1 then first, then he's got knight no, e2, no, no, right? Yeah, yeah. Right, so you'd have to go knight d4, but I think he just gets away with rook b1, and he's, he's okay. Yeah, so you can't... I was thinking the same thing. Can we get this thing to, to stick? But the rook covers rook f1. The knight... It's, but yeah, the knight is kind of trapped for the moment. I mean, you could try and play for like a right. Tugtwang. Can you what play you like, like B4, A5? Can you try and like queen these pawns? Oh, yeah. That's actually smart. Rook B4, B4 rook that a F1, move? B4 knight H3. You, rook F1, knight H3. Rook E1, king. Whoa. King D2, rook check, king oh, D1. Yeah, rook A2. Black's like probably winning that. Oh, That's an option. Yeah. Okay, he yeah. just played B4. What's up, bras in the chat? Chess bras in the chat. Congratulations, big fellas. I see y'all for the boys. Oh, yeah. They're getting yeah. ready. That's what's up, man. They're getting what's ready up? for the match. And they just won. We we missed the conclusion there. So let's just oh, they won? let's go check that out. So here we have two pawns against oh, a knight on goodness. the king side. Sarge finished with only 10 seconds less than he had. What? I mean, he spent like a second per move on all this stuff. So I mean, first of all... Ridiculous. So first of all, Andrew gets one more pawn trade here with G5. That's really good news for him. At this point, you'd be thinking if there's any scenario where Black can still draw this, it might be here. But look, 
it's the mating wow. attack coming, even in the end game, right? That King on f5, sweet. knight g5, looking for knight f7. Oh my goodness, that was beautiful display. Oof, and it's checkmate at the end. King h7, Dang. knight f8, king knight here, f8, rook g8. Mate? Big fella, why yeah. do you have to do him like that? Yeah. Why do you have to do him like that, man? That was nice. Okay, that was great. That was great. Good stuff. Danny so, Rich with the sub. What's up, bro? And look, he still has more than 10 minutes. So did he just know all along that there's no way you can ever defend this? He didn't have to, like, spend much time even finding his breakthroughs. Yikes. That was, like, too strong. I mean, he's over here, you know, doing it in five minutes. He wasted five minutes, not even fully five minutes, four minutes and 45 seconds to be exact. Mm -hmm. And then that's actually adding time, too, is that getting time every everything. So, man, what a <laughs> game. I like extravagant extravagant dirty who says that that was dirty time. but clean at the same at time the same right because it's like so smooth to win that end game like yeah. so quickly and so easily off of nothing but also like the final position was just dirty just like came and like mated the guy as king with three Knight minor pieces rook g8 that's not even it doesn't happen that yeah yet. it doesn't it doesn't so bishop to c5 is bishop on the board c5 on as, the board uh, Hammer plays it. I like Hammer's ambition here. I think he's in the driver's seat. Yeah, I thought I was thinking he was going to sack the e pawn and play like here, like a four rook back, bishop f eight, just sack the e pawn to keep his stuff rolling. But I guess on knight e five, d three is defended and just didn't mm. quite see it, so he went for something else. Bishop c five. That's a strong move because it's holding a knight. It can't move anywhere right now, just to do to the to the uh to the bishop being hanging but i would expect trading, white to trade on c5 yeah because two pawns are hanging for black you got e5 and a5 to take and then play rook you preferably b1 probably want a5 because those boys are connected then but. play rook b1 and what's the hold up is there something wrong rook maybe B1, like knight d3, d3 defending e5 knight a5 rook a8 yeah, rook d2 maybe rook b2 then to stop any checks well hang on after after so I'm I'm thinking knight bishop takes c5 knight takes c5. Yeah, oh you got to go rook to b1, b1 and then I take yeah. on d3 with the knight with the knight defending so rook e5. Rook takes allows uh rook takes allows rook d2. If yeah. knight moves. But the knight takes I think is good too cuz it defends e5 and if white plays knight a5 we have rook a8. Rook a8, yeah, right? you're right. You're and right. this knight yeah. is strong on d3, the pawn is pretty threatening. A4 is a move. Is a4 just winning? A4, Rook move, and then Bishop snap on B3. It. Oh, Rook B2 is the only move. That's the only move that he can make. So after Rook to B2, maybe Rook takes B3 or something. He did. He went with Rook to B2. How about B3 here? Uh, B3. I've missed this move A3. before, so now i got to look at it. You know, B3. Yeah, yeah. If white plays knight takes e5, black has bishop d4. So that's very simple. Okay. It wins in uh, right, two different right. ways, right? So let's right. say they take the pawn. We play a3, rook to a2, and now rook takes d3. And white can't play knight takes a3 because the bishop on d2 will hang at the end. Oh, that is sweet. Right? And if white plays like knight e5, let's say I can play rook takes b3, and this a pawn is looking super strong. Nice. Yeah, I think Black's going to he's going to figure this out. I think he's, he he should figure this out, but um he's he's got some time. It's about a minute, you know. He's doing well on time finally this okay. game. Okay. And if you, you play know. something simpler, I mean sometimes I just don't look at the simple moves. So rook d3, that's a simple move. We should look at that too. Um okay. bishop takes b4 trying to get rid of the queenside threats. Honestly, I think he's okay after bishop takes b4. I mean, what do you do? Bishop take it and rook you know, it's not enough. Bishop d4 maybe make a tempo that way. That's mm -hmm. like nothing. It's no follow-up. Okay. Maybe, yeah, rook, maybe rook d4. Bishop d4, takes c5. c5. Rook oh, takes actually, a4. Rook takes c4. Should a3. And then rook rook takes e4. Four, yeah. Also pleasant for black. Yeah. Everything winning. Look at mm. that. Every, you can play b3, a3. King h7 is okay for black. Like literally everything. It's fine here. <laughs> if black can play king h7 here with an advantage, <laughs> that's bad news for white. <laughs> like... I'll run my king away from the center and not take your hanging pawn. And not do anything. And then you'll, you just, move, then you'll just resign then depressed. Your, then it's your move. So he took on d3. He chose that option. Okay. So that's what we call the simpler option. And basically it, the calculation goes bishop takes b4, rook d4. And win the pawn on e4. White to do something too because I did snap material. So forcing is always usually the better ways to go. So We didn't yet really look at knight e5 here. But... 
maybe the same move, rook to d4 Rooks in response to uh, yeah, we did look at 95. Maybe? Uh, 95, yeah, I guess you got to go rook d4. It's annoying. 95, a3, knight okay, takes rook. Move, but this is okay. right, yeah, so you did go with rook d4, and here we go, guys. And this should be out after bishop takes. We take on c4, we snag another pawn, and we do have a pass pawn, which is not technically over, but black is up a pawn. Which means a lot, especially in a GM end game here. Right. So Rook takes Bishop A three, Rook takes C four, and we have a full pawn. We got a knight that's tricky in an end game and a pass pawn. Yeah. So and I would say in a lot of cases, having knight versus bishop or bishop versus knight increases your winning chances if you're the person with the extra pawn. Yep. Correct. So versus having like knight versus knight or bishop versus bishop or something like that, I think it gives you certain options to outmaneuver the other piece you know, using your advantage, but then also using the piece that can move in a different way. That's right. Like you can contest squares without always having to offer a draw. I, I Sorry, without having to always offer a trade, right, which might move the game towards something more drawish. And now we have a series of moves here. Yep. And he follows up with knight to f7. Kicking that around. Move that around town real quick. By the way, chess bras are still in the running to get 17 out of 18 points. They already have 14 because Sarich won the whole knockout. So they've already tied St. Louis for the most points scored all year. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. The turn up is real for the boys, guys. This is nice maneuvering here for by Hammer. Nice maneuvering as he's trying to figure this out. I mean, uh, Blitzstream. Blitzstream here. But also nice maneuvering by Hammer, too. So... Checks on the back rank. Oh, that's nice. I'm picking up a pawn if you move somewhere you're not supposed to. King G1. But you also don't want to get trapped on G1. Then you're like in this box where you get checkmated, right? Like knight wow. G5, knight F3 is like, it's <laughs> all it's all thing, right? Where you just get oh, relative. Yeah, that's, get trapped this is out. And made this it is in just there. a losing in game here. He's going to still play on, but this is just losing. I mean, White's plan... What uh, what Libyshevsky is counting on is cleaning up this a4 pawn. That's why he played the way he did with like the bishop on b4 pawn on a3. He wants to collect that a pawn and make it just a fight on the king side to defend. But I guess if he loses h2 and g3, he'll be just down too much, mm, even right. after eliminating the a pawn. So now he's looking at like, does he have something with bishop f8? He's, he's... yeah, knight g5, bishop f8. I mean, you got to try it. And then knight e6. Knight e6. Unfortunately, right? So Depending, yeah. he's like looking like, don't I have any other like thing I can do? Because if he plays like rook a7, rook g2, rook a4, rook g3, you're not stopping two connected pass pawns and a knight. Eh, yeah, that's it's like a happening. fighting force that you're not gonna deal with. Yeah. Right. It's actually 40. They're, they're down under a minute. Both of these guys are. So this is going to get wild. We're into like a bullet mode now with just a few seconds for increment. Okay, bishop c3. Right. So he's looking at e5. Oh, did and he he's looking drop? at g7. But he is giving up the a pawn to do this. But, you know, on 96, he's got rookie 7. Maybe. Yeah, he might have messed this up, big fella. What in the world did he just do? King g6? You might have to run. You might have to run. Because 96, rookie, rookie 7, like, you, what do you do on that? Like, that's just not a move. So you got to go King G6. Like, there's nothing else to do. Well, that's not that's really not great. Up, Did he have nothing better after Bishop C3? Wow, big fella. You really just jumped off. Bishop C3. Yeah. That was Bishop a good move. King. That was just a that legit good move, right? Because he can't really cover E5. And Bishop on E5 is going to hit G7 and G3. So that was a huge Dang, defensive move from Libyshevsky. A dagger. Look at him finding moves like a big boy here. That was so Hammer's just got to centralize the king and hope that the A pawn is enough here. But um, he's very low on things with which to win this game. Though, 96 is not a move. Maybe it is. 96, rook f7, king g6, mm -hmm. and then snap on f4 and go into that game. That end game is nice. What about 96? Mm, I'm not a fan of the rook end game myself. Yeah, 96, and that should be out. 96, king g6 after rook f7 check. He has mm -hmm. six seconds on the clock. You got to move, Jan. What are you doing? 96, there it is, guys. After rook check, king g6, snap on f4. I have two pawns versus your one. I should be able to pull this out. I, I don't think so. I think, I think yeah. it's a draw. It could be. Rook well, f7, king training. g6, rook a7. And if you go into the, the pure rook endgame, I think white can hold it for sure. Check, check, check. Especially yeah. what's funny is when do you ever have to try to queen two rook pawns? Like when does that ever happen? I got to try to queen two rook pawns. Both right. of them are trying to be queens. Yeah, I mean, Which, even without the F-pawn, you can often draw that end game. Okay, so he keeps yeah. centralized. 
sacking that h6 pawn. What's he looking to do? To mate the king with just his knight and rook or something? No, I mean, he's staying, he's staying active. You gotta be careful. Rook takes. Put him on the back rank. Wait, wait. You needed the d3 square for your king. Rook d3 check first, no? So I thought too. I thought the uh, same. Oh, what about knight f5 though now? Was that a tactic? Knight f5 check. I think he might have missed that. Jesus. Man, knight f5, rook d7, king e6. <laughs> Right? He Maybe could have he had... can win the A pawn, though. Maybe he could get over there in time. Careful. Careful. He's not made it, is he? It looks scary. It looked like somebody's getting made it somehow. All right. King. Ooh, that wouldn't have been made. Check. Is this, I guess check it's on? just all out bullet here. That rook could come to G4 if you want to play King A2. Oh, but he's two got seconds, two seconds, one second. one second. Come on. Three. Okay, he made a move. Don't just lose. He made a move. Three seconds on the clock. Yeah, just keep checking them, bro. You have nothing else left here. Well, I could maybe bring the rook. Survive. I could bring the rook to the fourth rank to defend the a pawn and play king a two. But yeah, maybe he's just not winning it no matter what, right? I mean, this bishop's on the long diagonal, so there's not really a winning strong. scenario for black here. Oh man, that was so strong. So they're gonna have to go so to a strong. bullet game too here, huh? Here they're go. gonna bullet have to match. go to a bullet tiebreaker. The bullet tiebreaker. That's going to be so much fun. Bullet tiebreaker for one point in the standings. tiebreaker in a few seconds yeah if i glance at my standings for one second again probably got probably got six points for the blizzard now so if con if con can get one more point if they can win this bullet tiebreaker then they're three points ahead so then so then they're tied on points even if minnesota wins their match right and what's the fan club tiebreak in that case in that case norway has in that case, Minnesota has more fans than Khan by like 20. A very, very small number this season, Yikes. I think. So in that case, Minnesota could get the second spot in guaranteed in the playoffs on tiebreak off of Khan. And Khan would have to go to the Twitter vote next. Whew. Whew. All right, Here we'll we see. Go. We'll Here see. We and uh, Ken has draw odds in this. So Here comes the bullet. Players. Ken. So here we go. Bullet round. Here we go. We have an English versus a king's in defense so mm -hmm. i'm actually going to flip it and look at it from can's point of view because i like actually seeing this because i play this so i'm going to watch it from black okay. but we're going to see from anywhere doesn't matter to me so d6 is on the board 92 okay these guys are reluctant to push their pawns to their full potential i mean e3 could have gone to e4 d6 could have gone to d5 but they're they just nothing about the center here like no center now we play e5 finally and then h3 yeah this is just all theory here h5 knight d7 stuff B5 is eventually going to be played. He played Bishop B6 first. Yeah, this, this is all is, theory? Like, I could see GMs theory. play this in a real tournament? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can see this happening. It's going to be slow play stuff. You know, this is boring. It's so boring. Exactly. So long. So <laughs> I'd be here. complaining. I'd be complaining if they were playing this opening. <laughs> oh, man. It's so long, but it is what it is. So, 30 seconds here already for Jan. 50, and I mean, yeah. Jan here, uh, Fabian is 10 seconds. That's it. Yeah, Hammer versus Lubezhevsky, that's right. Hammer is the gnomes. He's the man. He's streaming. He's managing. He's playing. Basically he's a one-man team right now. One-man team. One-man hammer. That said, the team's losing, so I guess that's what happens if you've got a one-man team. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. You see how the attack commences here. There you go. D4. That's right. D4 Take some space. D5. Probably got to back that boy up. He took that. Oh, no. I cannot allow a rook come to C1. Oh, because, you know, if he went back with bishop d7, then on dc6, six his d6 pawn uh, was hanging, right? So Nice. Oh, yeah, and he's he not even going to open the c file right away. He's going to trade a piece first. Interesting. I thought he was going to oh, this to keep everything oh, you open. You start a new one, big fella. You, you uh -oh. got too many weaknesses. So queen b8, you know. queen b4, he just kills that pawn where it stands. Just yeah, like. Yeah, have a, start a new one, man. Let's I know it's on your side of the board, but you can't defend anything. rook d8. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. He's still, I mean, that's what I just still in a way, knight c3? You got to go knight Bishop h7 e8? or something. Oh. Oh, this is, no, that's ugly. You're missing the pawn. He had to go knight h7 to put the bishop on f8. That was the only move. But now he can ah, to allow knight d6, but play bishop uh, f8, uh, tie him up at the end. Anyway. Right, Oof. right. Anyway. Man. Anyway. <laughs> Isaac. Ay, ay, ay. All right. Okay, well, we're starting to fight back. We're he fighting kicked, back here. He kicked him back a little bit. 
Rook D7. That's an ugly move to make, but we got to do what we got to do here. Rook G7, Knight G5. Bishop. I mean, Black's got an ugly position full of ugly moves to make. So. Oh man, Bishop D8 followed by Rook G7 is good thing for him. Is that Hammer's got like four seconds? I mean, oh, he does. He does. Push on E4, definitely break that up. Bishop B2, very, very Knight C4. Here. B5, make sure you get that knight out of the way. That knight cannot stick around. Then work G7. Oh, Bishop He wanted G7. this anyway. G4. Nice. This is like D square for the knight of this pawn oh, man, structure. Black, Black's doing well. Man, I love these kind of positions. This looks crazy, but I love it. Pawn takes eight, but if, eight takes. But if White gets to play F5, Black's going to be rolled over here, no matter no matter what. Takes, takes. What? Just play F5. What do you need that pawn on G4 for? Yeah, he really did. I think he could have played that. I think he just missed that. Knight F6, you got to get this rook involved. Rook G7. Okay, that Oof. makes sense. Oof. Bishop B2, hello. Oh, hello, oh, Rook. In trouble, you done. Knight H6, F5, oh, everything. He jumped off the deep oh. spot. He get up in the stretcher. It's over. That was strong. You got in trouble, big fella. Yep, you could have played Knight F6 first to allow the Rook to go H7 check. Take he, Bishop takes. Okay, we still got bishops. How do we get the pieces involved? E3, I'll just take it. I don't yeah, even care. whatever. Hey, whatever. Give me that. Get rid of that. Get the queen H6. Here it is. He's down. He's yeah. down. Yeah. That and king was about to get carried out on a stretcher, that black king, man. Oh, man, that was crazy. Look at that bishop on B2. We've seen one of those before today, and White also won that one. Monstrous, monstrous. James Keith, <sighs> always a pleasure. Thanks, man. What's up, Jackie the Sweet? All right. So you, bro. that means wow. that, means that uh, if the Blizzard can win their match against the chess bra, they will pass Khan for second place. Wow. Definitely. Definitely. That's where we're at. That's where we're at now with these standings here. Um, well, how do you enjoy that bullet game? I, I like oh, that. Man. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun. Double edge, super pack punching, swinging yeah. hammers and stuff. Like Boom. it was great. I think we learned something too. I mean, it was played fast, but I think we. I think hopefully everybody learned like an important point. I'm gonna just go highlight the power of the knight on e3 in this pawn structure. So. When I was younger, I thought this pawn structure should be pretty good for black because you got a protected pass pawn on e4. I'm like, great, protected pass pawn, lots of space on the king side. Beautiful, right? But there's this thing that people play this on purpose for white. And the way that they play this on purpose for white is they put a knight on e3 and then they crack the king side with g4. And Very somehow, smart. despite the pawn on e4 being a protected passer, it sort of becomes weak if white's able to undermine the f5 square. So mm -hmm. basically then you get... And that's exactly what happened. B5 may not even have been a good move. I mean, I understand he was worried about defending D6, but B5, White actually really just wanted to play Bishop B2 and Knight E3. He didn't want those pieces where they were on the queen side. You know, B4 would be another bad move because the bishop wants to come to B2. And after right. just G4, he just can't control this square, right? If he plays Rook F7, White would trade twice on F5 and play Bishop takes E4. And then you see how the black king just falls apart. So actually, this structure here can be pretty um, can be pretty tough uh, for that, for black. A, a, a nice move there as he found that sequence to just right here. You know, Hammer like, took wow. on g4. He could have also played f5, um, which would also probably be white kind of rolling over black. Black could try and hold him up with rook f7, but you always have bishop e4. And once that pawn's on f5, white's just got too much space on the king side, and you know he can just come rolling through over there. Mm -hmm. in my experience so well, we have uh, yeah. how much time we have 12 minutes before the next match starts and in the chat yeah. they say that uh minnesota needs more players which they do guys they do, do need they some players. what's it what's that match looking like right now oh man 12 uh well let's see rating wise uh evenly matched at the top at top half evenly matched i think um uh, minnesota blizzard has maybe a few guys higher rated on the top half that are setting it over the tipping scale but then it also mm -hmm. evens out on the other side for the chess bras so it looks like chess bras have probably 20 more people than oh my goodness it's just i'm still scrolling yeah there's like 20 20 people more on chess bras team so we do need nice. some more for the blizzard guys make sure you guys get in there and play well and but but, but we're impartial so if you want to help minnesota i'm gonna say go chess bras right we gotta we gotta keep chess it bras. balanced here between yeah. the two of us so, um, you know, if there's more, if there's more chess bras, there's more chess bras. So it goes. Sometimes the bigger team brings it and wins it. And I personally would love to see the chess bra score 17 out of 18, just because I feel like we would have been there when a kind of record was set. I don't, I don't know how a team in this format could score more than 17 out of 18. That would be pretty insane. 
Mm. Um, because we've had a lot of teams that were either very good in the knockouts, like they like brought some like super strong player like Verusia Nakobian, like winning three knockouts in a row. We've had teams do that. Um, Germany, uh, the bottom bottom team was another example. They got first place twice in the knockout and second place once, so they almost swept all three knockouts. But each wow. time it was a team that didn't do so great in the fan clubs, you know. And then we've had teams that like crushed the fan club, like Chengdu Pandas Ooh, or Reykjavik <laughs> Puffins, and each of those teams were teams that didn't bring like you know the 26 2700 player dominate the knockouts the chess bras are the first team we've seen i think that basically was both the top team in the fan club matches and the top team in the knockouts uh so yeah i mean it's a, a special accomplishment out of all the teams we've seen this this summer that's right and i mean they're representing as the bras should as the bras would so very very good stuff to see there, there's so much chess left starting in 10 minutes. So it's up to you guys to join um, these these matches here. There's still a few that joined Minnesota Blitz Blizzard here. So still going on 10 minutes, 10 minutes out. Cool. 10 minutes out. Let me see. Okay, thanks, Isaac. Thanks for that. Shout out to the chat, guys. Good to see you guys. It's 986 of you right now. Shout out to you today. And hopefully you're playing. Hopefully you're playing in the matches today. If you did play, that's awesome. And you still have time to play if you'd like to play. You can choose a team here. Starting in nine minutes, it's going to be the Minnesota Blizzard versus the Montreal Chess Bras. Nine minutes left. What's up, Kitansky? What's going on, man? It says we in here. What up, bro? Welcome. All right. We've got the updated standings here. Um showing the two point lead that the Blitzstream have right now in the race for that second place. The Blitzstream have scored everything they can score. They're done. They've done what they could. And now uh, it's up to the blizzard. To try and take out the big boys and right. uh, move up into second place. If they do not um, take out the big boys and move into second place, then the Blizzard will uh, finish in third place, and they could still be in that uh, Twitch poll with a chance to get into the playoffs. We've got eight minutes until this match, and I'm being told that we're going to have to make way for um, we're going to have to make way for the uh, Sinkerfield Cup. Before that match is over, in about nine minutes nine or so. Minutes or so, guys. So you guys. So we're not going to see exactly how that shakes out for the Blizzard. Um, you guys are going to have to check back in in about an hour to find out which team made it into third place and go to that Twitch poll and vote for your favorite team, which will be between the San Francisco Mechanics, the Pittsburgh Pawn Grabbers. You can see them That's all up right. here in the standings. The Mumbai Movers. Got third place over Armenia in a tiebreak order. So it'll be those three teams plus either Khan or Minnesota, depending how it finishes up. So you have to see which of these teams ends up in third place. Then go to Twitch. It's going to be on the Pro Chess League channel instead of the Chess channel, which will have Sync Field Cup. Go over to the Pro Chess League channel and vote for uh, your favorite of those teams that you'd like to see in the playoffs tomorrow. By do way, not make sure you vote for pawn grabbers. Uh, make sure you vote for those guys. And do not, do not, do not. Whichever team gets chosen for the playoffs, you know, to some extent, who cares as long as there's a playoffs match, right? Do not miss the playoffs next um, tomorrow. Tomorrow, right? You can miss that vote if you need to. That's fine. Don't miss tomorrow. Whatever. Tomorrow. Somebody else who really cares is going to vote. Someone's going to win the vote. But tomorrow there's going to be playoffs, and uh, we do not want to miss that. We're going to have two matches tomorrow. We're going to have a match between the 7th and 8th seeds and a match between the ninth and 10th seeds. We don't yet know what those teams are, and that'll change the time zone based on, you know, Mumbai has a very different time zone than, you know, San Francisco or somebody by, like, 12 hours. So we'll see We'll see who that ends up being. But there will be two playoff matches tomorrow. Two playoff matches, and it's going to be exciting, guys. It's all about you guys, you know, the summer series here. So 
Thank you so much for hanging around and you guys bring all the energy here and all of the matches are you guys battling it out with each yeah. other. So we appreciate that. Um, all right. I'm going to show one other thing here, which is um, if we, if we go to the playoff bracket, it is definitely determined that we have certain matchups that will happen on the 30th. Okay. These teams do not need to play in the playing rounds tomorrow. We've got bottom, bottom snowballs and Moscow wizards, two playoff teams from the regular season this year, also in the playoffs of the, uh, and bottom, bottom was, you know, a finalist. Um, they, they got second in the whole season. So they'll be playing each other on August 30th, looking ahead, August 30th, they'll play. And also St. Louis against Chengdu. Um, that's a matchup which I think whoever wins that is going to win the whole summer series. Um, those are also two final four teams. That's just how I'm calling it. I think whichever team wins that first round playoff matchup is going to go all the way on to become the winner. That's right. Yeah, St. Louis is my pick in the bracket. It's going to be very tough to get through them, but we will yeah. see. Um. <laughs> All right, so someone's asking us about a vote chess game. And uh, yeah, that's a reminder that if you're in these fan clubs, I mean, all the fan clubs are playing, you know, between one and three vote chess matches against other teams. And uh, Farley, unfortunately, I how we're going to deal with it is we're going to lose. Uh, he's asking about the San Francisco team, which I'm also the manager of. And basically, uh, our team has started just blundering every other move. And uh, we've allowed Knight takes a pawn with check on, like, move six in the opening. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, we know the other team is going to find it. And I I don't know. I, I kind of give up on that game. But anyway, get out there. Start another game or whatever. You know, play in those vote chess matches. Talk with other people. I mean, I would say the point of vote chess is really talk with other people about your games, right? Talk about your moves, talk about your games with other people from your fan club. That's the fun of it. So whether you play good moves or not, whether you blunder or, or, or find brilliancies, um, I would say discuss, discuss, and you shall learn something, right? There's a, there's a private chat room for your fan club to talk about their moves right under the board. Just scroll down like two centimeters and you'll learn something or you'll teach something to somebody else. That's right. It's all about you guys, man. And of course, it's always good to use all the resources you do have on chess.com and hang out with the people there. Check out the coaching, the forums, the learn tab, puzzle rush, everything that's there so that you can be a better player. That's what it's for. That's why it's there. And uh, you guys can all use it and utilize it so that you can be the best player you could be. Yeah. So um, three minutes till the match, three minutes till the match. If you are a member of both the Chess Pro Fan Club and the Minnesota Fan Club, you cannot join the match unless you leave one of those clubs for a moment. It doesn't mean you're not a fan of them, but that's just how the live club matches work. You have to leave the club for a moment of the team you're not going to play for. Then go back to the live chess tournament, join it for the team you are going to play. Once the match is over, you can become a fan of the other team again and you know keep following all the activity in both fan clubs. But anybody who's stuck, um, who's stuck not being able to register, that could be why. Do that. Get in there. Play your games. And then, you know, follow them both later. That's right. It's time to play, guys. Have some fun. Be excited about it. And uh, it's the summer series, man. First year we're doing this. It's going to be fun. And uh, we got some more some more chess to do, especially playoffs being tomorrow or actually uh, games tomorrow. So that's going to be fun to play. Excited. I will be there tomorrow. I will be there. Me too. And I will be watching. I'm pumped. I've been enjoying the live club matches and the knockouts, but you know, I've also been missing the normal um, format. You know, four v four, like all the like you know all the top guns blazing, and uh, so it'll be it'll be pretty exciting. If you want to find out the schedule of those matches tomorrow, um, you just go to ProChessLeague.com. That's where it'll be. Um, it's going to be a few hours before it's found out because of this vote, right? But um, you know, supposing the vote runs something like from noon to 4 p.m. Pacific or something like that, that means um, you know, sometime this evening Pacific time or in the morning in Europe and Asia, you'll be able to see the schedule and the timing for those matches as well as which teams got in. So yeah, ProChessLeague.com. It's not going to be in an hour. It's going to be more like in five and a half, six hours. Um, cause we've got a live club match to play. Then we got to, you know, do the due diligence. Just make sure there was no funny business in any of the matches that the results are correct. 
you know, public service announcement, do not cheat anybody. Don't go into the other club's, you know, team and lose on purpose. Do not go into your club's team and use a computer. Just keep it clean and fair. Let the best team win. And, uh, you know, once chess.com's checked that, then there will be the poll for four hours. And after the poll, then the teams will be known. So ProChessLeague.com. Uh, pawn grabbers for your poll. Thank you so much. We would love that. So, What's, what's that, James? Pawn grabbers. Go for the pawn grabbers in the, in the Twitch. Oh, poll. you want people to vote for your team? Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know if we're allowed to say that when we're the official <laughs> commentators. But okay. <laughs> That'll be our final message for today to you is uh, – is uh, that we're going to uh, leave this leave this match? If you want to follow it, are either of the teams streaming? I don't know. Maybe the chess bras are streaming. What do you think? Is that somewhere where people could follow this match if they want to? Uh, if just they want to me... follow it after we go offline, mm -hmm. should be something like that. Chess bra always be streaming. Are they stuff. are they streaming their match? I mean, yeah, I, I thought they're we were... featuring they're streaming their match. So if you really want to watch this match. I would say head head over to Amon Hamilton, who's following Ivan Saric's games, and that should still be fun and exciting. Otherwise, stick around right here because we'll have Cinco Field Cup coverage here on the main Chess.com channel in a moment. And uh, yeah, check back in for the poll a little bit later this afternoon. And uh, yeah, we'll see you for playoffs tomorrow, everybody. See you guys for the playoffs tomorrow. Peace.